It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. The Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots, and this week's podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. With beautiful templates created by world-class designers, Squarespace makes it easy to turn your ideas into a new and unique website in just a few clicks. And Squarespace's analytics help you grow in real time. If you can think it, if you can dream it, you can make it with Squarespace. Head to squarespace.com for a treat for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the a tree trial. You know, I was just around 52 Savage, and 52 Savage can't talk because he ain't got no teeth. Yeah. So he's from Dallas, so he sounds like that. So it's like, yeah. For a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code IDIOT to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think I have an opinion on shit this week. Bro, I was thinking that on the way here. <laughs> I was literally, I was like, I'm going I, through news. I'm like, bro, what happened? Bro, I'm gonna be, I'm si- I, I, I was in there peeing. I'm like, damn. Can I walk in here? I shook your hand and I had to go pee. And I'm like... I don't think I got an opinion on shit this I week. Got, I got. I have an interesting hypothetical we could discuss for a little bit. I, I, I have a, I have a, a theory on to why I don't have an opinion on shit though. Oh, okay, that's good. Go because I'm not on social media, so I don't have all this frivolous bullshit on my brain. Yo, check it. I don't give a fuck. Check it. You don't give a fuck, but doesn't that make you more? Um, uh, bah, 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 what am I trying to say? More like uh, interested in conversation. Like, I don't have Twitter. And real I'm, conversation. Real conversation. So I don't have Twitter, yes. right? Yes. And I'm watching the NBA, and I'm just thinking of fire tweet after fire tweet after <laughs> fire tweet, but I got nobody to tweet it to, right? So now when I interact with people on the street, all of a sudden I have these, the opinions that I haven't yeah. gotten out of my system yet. I got all this shit bubbling. Bro, it's nothing like seeing shit in real time. For example, last night, yesterday, I, first of all, I started reading a book. I'm running through books right now yeah. just because I'm not... Fucking just sitting around tweeting and shit. So I'm running through books. I'm writing and shit. So I was. I'm actually reading uh, Tiffany's book right now. Tiffany Haddish, mm. Last Black Unicorn. I just got got it yesterday, and I'm halfway through it because I'm not spending all my motherfucking time tweeting. Wow. Before that, I finished Michael Rappaport's book in like wow. a day. Wow. Day or two. But thought um, you might spend some time with your children, but that's fine. Oh, that Get too. Get into the books. Yeah, that's, that, you that, know that, what that, I mean? No, it's not a big that deal. Was, that's 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 that was all day yesterday. But <laughs> I'm sitting there and like I turn on a little bit of NBA. And I see Gordon Haywood break his fucking leg or whatever the fuck it was yeah, at first. Yeah, ankle, yeah. Because I turned from it because it was disturbing me. So think about how fucked up we are as people. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as I saw it, I was like, I didn't put, pray for him. I turned from him because I didn't want to disturb me. away, bro. Yeah, what the oh, fuck? How dare yeah. you break Come your leg while I'm watching yo. the fucking game? Snap it back. I don't want to see that shit. No, nah, it was gross. But yeah. watching it in real time and like having like, I remember texting Van like, yo, did you just see what just happened to Gordon Haywood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't a second or third hand reaction because yeah. you saw it on social media it yeah. was just like did you see what happened to Gordon Haywood yeah, yeah it was great it was word of mouth it feels I good found word of mouth too I, I was going to my boy Jack's building and the security uh, the doorman in the building is running back into the building he's like and I hear him say damn you heard what happened to Gordon Haywood and I go what happened to Gordon Haywood and it was a throwback to the 80s when that's how news yes, got around yes man it's the best when your friend calls you now that your friend texts you yo you heard OJ got out it, Yes. You know what I mean? Like that, that, yes. This is how we found out about you. I Someone love had to it. tell you it was big. I love it. Yeah, and guess what yeah. I don't do too? I don't run to social media when I hear about something. Like if somebody tells me something happened, mm-hmm. I don't run to social media. I go to the news site now. I go right to the site. I yeah, go yeah. right to the That's smart. I go right to a source. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to see people's opinions. Yeah. I don't want to see what you think happened. Mm-hmm. I need to know what happened yeah. so I can form my own opinion. And yeah. In a way, it kind of like inspires funny because you get back to your opinion and it's not clouded by everybody else's like you go on a Twitter timeline you see a bunch of puns and shit yes. about a situation yes. this is just raw you. yes yes and, and and you realize how important real news is and I'll tell you why and I saw this with the Gordon Hayward situation yesterday yeah. he broke his leg I watched it then I went on the news sites maybe an hour later to see what it is he had broke right and the sites was like they just told me the story yeah. No opinions. No, yeah. he's out for a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a broke leg. It's yeah. like he suffered a bad injury. Yeah. More details to come. Right. That is the best. Yeah. Just give me the news. Tell me what happened. Don't tell me your opinion of what happened. Yeah. Don't tell me what you think is going to happen. Just give me the story yeah. and let me form my own POV. It's the best, man. No, it's good, man. It is. A, it's a different experience. I almost find it helping me comedically. I think I got too much out of my system. Mm. Like for comedy, for me, it's always got to bubble up. 
Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I got to be, like, angry about something or bothered by something. And then all of a sudden, I just go on stage and, like, there it is. I release it on stage. Whereas Twitter, it was just this. And I love Twitter. Don't get me wrong. But it was this outlet for every idea I had. So it didn't sit there and stew. No, you didn't get you a chance gotta, to flesh it out. You didn't get a chance to think it through. Yeah, well, Comedians I didn't get are known a, for being smart. It didn't get a chance to marinate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you got to yeah. add the flavor to yeah, it. The flavor yeah, yeah, yes, comes from yes. having a convo with you, yes. having a convo with Chris, yes. having, a, having all these conversations. Once I get it out on Twitter, I'm done with it. Do you remember the days when comedians used to go on stage and comedians used to have well thought out points that were, or you, you could just argue amongst each other? Like it wasn't. It really was no like holes in it. I'm, I'm, I'm one of those. Yeah, you know, like, I'm saying. But you, but you have to be smart to be a real yeah, comedian. Absolutely. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nowadays, all of these guys are just you're throwing your opinions out online. So all you're doing is backing up. You're trying to back up these opinions that aren't even well thought out. Right. 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 That's why everybody trying to be first. And a lot of times you end up talking about shit you don't really care about. Yes. Like for me, for stand up. It would take longer to develop bits because everyone I actually fucking was bothered by or, or in love with or yeah, like yeah, felt yeah, passionate yeah, yeah. about. I was like, no, I really want to make this point. Even if it's stupid, I really want to make it. Yeah. And God bless Twitter because it was a lot of fun, but I do think it was better for me to get off it. I missed I missed, I missed, missed the NBA, though. I miss being able to tweet I don't the NBA. miss none of it. I don't give a shit. Only thing I got on my phone is Instagram because I have to have it on my phone because you can't have it on your fucking computer. Right. Like, you have to have it on your phone. You want to upload pictures, videos, fly the way you're going to be at. Yeah. I don't care about sharing my thoughts. Why? I get paid to share my thoughts. Yeah. Tune into The Breakfast Club. Yeah. Tune into the podcast. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Catch me on TV. Yeah. Like, it's better when yeah. you get to think about things. Like, like, like what I, I said, told everybody on IG Live yesterday, it was a reason I didn't just jump out the window and start commenting on that Eminem freestyle when yeah. it happened. I didn't want to get caught up in the moments of everybody's emotions. Let everything settle down. Yeah. And then two days later, i tell you how I feel about right, some right. shit. Yeah. Like, that's how I feel right now. Yeah. With everything. Yeah, if you have a great opinion, it doesn't matter if you're not first. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? Like if your if your opinion is mediocre or whack, that's a fact. You gotta be first. That's a fact. If your opinion is dope, it don't matter when it comes out. I mean, Chappelle and Rock would talk about things that happened in the news a year or two years before their special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it would still be the hottest opinion on it. That's why Trump talk is getting so redundant now. There's no new hot takes. We same, get it. We time. know. We know. Like time, how many yeah. times you gonna say a guy is bad, a guy is terrible? We get it. I get yeah, it. Yeah, Even like I heard him when he told the uh, he told the the, the 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 soldier, the soldier's mom. We're fatigued by it. Yeah, he told the soldier's yeah, he knew mom. What he was yeah, he knew what he was signing up for. <laughs> what is the context of that? Well, the guy's dead. I'm aware. <laughs> so, so, so tr- no, but so tr- like, why? What is the context of of? I understand how it's being publicized in the news. It's being publicized in the news. Like he walked in there and said, and uh, he knows what he's signing up for, and then walks out. But what was the context of how he said it? What was the complete conversation? Because right now we're just taking one line that we don't like about a person Bro, that we don't like, Trump, and we're Trump has no sympathy. No empathy, and he's Trump. That's how. That's how Come Trump on. communicates. You're better than that, man. No, that's how he communicates. Listen, I communicate like that. Yeah. People could. People look, can take one sentence out of context for you and make you look horrible if they want. I'm sure they do it all the time, and I'm sure it's frustrating for you. That's one of the reasons I'm off Twitter. Is you could take one tweet yeah. out of context, right, and make me look like the biggest piece of shit in the world. And I was like, I'm not giving you this ammo. Listen, no my more. mom has always told me I don't know how to talk to people. Yeah. Donald Trump does not know how to talk to people. It's I not, would definitely he he agree. Yeah, he didn't think. I guarantee you in his mind, he didn't think he said anything wrong because technically he really didn't. You sign up for war, it's a good chance you could get killed or yeah. whatever. Was he, a, was he a soldier? What was he? Yeah, I mean, the, the context is Trump was getting criticized for not responding to the soldiers that got killed in Niger, right? Right. Okay. So, you know, what seems to have happened is he got criticized and like when he usually gets criticized, he started backpedaling and tried to deflect. And the way he deflected was he tried to say, well, Obama... Never called any Which families. Which was stupid. Directly. That was a lie. Right. And then he specifically cited, I didn't realize this, but uh, General Kelly, who's Trump's chief of staff, his son was actually killed in Iraq, which I didn't know. Yeah. And so he said, look, he didn't call Kelly's son. Right. We didn't call yeah, Kelly. And then they also point out the fact that when he did speak, when he finally, I think, got around to speaking with uh, one of the, I don't know if it was the, the wife or the mother. Yeah. From one of the soldiers killed in Niger, you know, and then he said, hey, he knew what he signed up for. He knew for. what he signed up for. Right. Listen, by the way, I don't even think that uh, Trump meant anything when he said that other presidents didn't call. And I'm not defending Trump at all. I'm just saying, yeah. I'm just, like, I didn't, the reason I don't think that, I really believe people tell Trump things. 
And he just runs with it. This motherfucker's not doing no research. I think somebody told him, you know, Obama didn't call. Yeah. Any of the presidents, you're the first. Right. Yeah. And he runs with it. So you're saying he's black sports online. He's black. No, not only is he black sports online, he's fucking, he's fucking Ron Burgundy. All right? You put he's it in, he's Ron Burgundy and black sports yes, online. You put it in front of him, he's going to run with it. Yeah, like, yeah. simple as that. I don't think it's even that. I think he's. I swear to God, black sports online. If I was on Twitter, I would not be surprised if they tweet some shit out like Gordon Hayward screams N word. Then breaks his ankle after. after I don't. The play I, I, you, you told me about Black Sports Online. I, I see them every now and then. Like I don't see it. What's the? What's, what do they do? Uh, no, nothing. Nothing. Nobody else does on Twitter. Nothing. CNN doesn't do on Twitter. Nothing. Fox doesn't do on Twitter. Nothing. Any of them don't do on Twitter. They just run off with some bullshit. Let me go to Black Sports Online. See what they. Can got I say one on. thing while you Please, do that yeah, about yeah. Uh, Hayward? And I got. I know what these NBA players, the sentiment they're trying to express when they send out these tweets, prayers up. You know, because they show all the tweets that came out. You know, everybody, mm -hmm. prayers up for yeah, Gordon yeah, Hayward. Yeah, yeah. Save your prayers for some other shit, please, NBA players. Like, <laughs> Why? He oh, doesn't this, need your prayers. What's your non-NBA playing he ass He doesn't up? need your prayers. Why doesn't he need there prayer? There are people lying in fucking hospital beds who need your prayers. Well, they They're, don't need your prayers. Chris, what they, the fuck are you saying right now? It's listen, it's, listen, no, listen. but it's a weird... <laughs> listen, let him get the Gordon, point out. Listen, let get the point out. Gordon Haywood is someone who worked is. very hard to get somewhere, and on a human level, yeah, I feel really bad for the guy. He put in a lot of work, and it's not going to happen this year. Yeah. He just signed a contract worth I don't know how many millions of dollars. He is going to get literally the best medical care over the course of the so next year. I don't deserve prayer because I'm rich? Jesus he doesn't Christ. need what prayers. What world are we living there in? There are people who need... What I'm saying is that NBA players have this platform, this attention, and it's the same thing where they didn't really say shit until they came after, until Trump came after Steph Curry, right? God about to give you more Lyme disease because who are you to tell God how many I'm prayers saying, he can handle? God can handle... Like, he can handle as much as he wants. <laughs> what I'm telling these NBA players is... If you're going to use your platform to pray for somebody else, man, you don't. Gordon what Hayward do, doesn't do pray. Why can't I pray for multiple things? Because I don't see them doing is that. Is there a finite amount of prayer? That, exactly. So that's what, what my Chris question is. About? God is sitting up there in heaven reading the newspaper, and right. so he feels a little itch. Like, hold on, what's going on here? Well, yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, First all of these all, tweets from he NBA He creates the news. He doesn't read the newspaper. <laughs> all these tweets from NBA players. <laughs> by the way, he already knows what happened. Exactly. What happened? By the way, by the Let way. Let me see if they got this shit right. No, no, no. Yeah, by the way, exactly. Let me see what they. I, I told I knew this was going to happen to Gordon. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gordon. Right. Gordon, right. Gordon Hayward broke his ankle. Here we go again. <laughs> so, so, what are we supposed to think? That, like, God is responding to the. Oh, these NBA players are tweeting. Oh, let me. Let me make him heal in six months instead of the normal 12. Chris, like, what I don't, is wrong I'm, with praying I'll tell for you, people? I'll tell you something, and this has affected me since Greg has been, what are you in, talking about, Greg has been in, in, in a hospital. Um, and I'm someone who grew up with no religion whatsoever. And I had, after last week's episode, I, I had thousands of people. I mean, this was unbelievable. I couldn't believe the response. Reach out to me and they say, hey, we're praying for Greg. We're praying for you and praying for your family. I'm someone who was raised with no religion. That shit felt amazing, man. That's great. It felt. Pray for Greg. Fucking... Don't pray for Gordon Haywood. Why wait, wait, can wait. I not pray for Gordon Haywood and Greg? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you talking about? Chris turned into the me. The <laughs> I'm it. all reasonable. This and... might be the worst hot take in the history of Bernie. <laughs> no, so the argument. You sound like Joe Budden saying Chance the Rapper's too positive right yeah, now. Yeah, like, yeah. what is wrong with prayer? So the argument I think you might. I don't like. Maybe well, you should make this argument, Chris, is. is Pray for more things, not don't pray for certain people. Fine, that's fine then. That that's fair. Make Gordon Haywood number three thousand eighty-five. No number, on your list. Chris. How do you know what these guys are praying for? I'm because sure. I follow their tweets. They so don't pray stop, for anything you else. Stop living life through Twitter. Get off Twitter. I'm bro. sure that I'm sure LeBron prays for his kids every day. Yeah. His wife. We only people get he the, loves. We only get the screenshots when someone breaks their ankle. These people are praying all the time. I mean, Dwayne Wade's mom is a uh, what is it? A bishop? What are they called? I don't fucking know. What is it when you're in, in the church? You got a church. A pastor? pastor? Deacon, yeah. Pastor. Deacon, I don't know. Yeah. I, don't know. I just don't understand. What's the problem with prayer, Chris? Hey, there's nothing wrong with prayer. I He's think not upset at prayer. He's I upset it, it, at what they're praying for. I feel these he NBA like guys, they have this, this is brotherhood and it's them versus the world. What do world. you pray for, Chris? I don't pray for anything. Jesus Christ. Well, then why the fuck are you talking, bro? <laughs> Jesus Christ. You're not helping nobody. Jesus Christ. I think, at least help this is why I don't, no, 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 no. I think very... Positive thoughts for people. I That's worry what prayer about is. people. Prayer. I'm, What's the difference I'm prayer prayer. empathetic and compassionate. You like meditation, for a lot of right? Yeah, What's absolutely. The prayer is meditation. Yeah, I just don't pray to God. Okay, you, positive energy. You pray to. He prays to Buddha. General He's Soul. Asian. Whatever, whoever it is. I don't know who the fuck you pray for. Now I'm for. praying for you. <laughs> Buddha's the Asian God, right? Yeah. He prays for the Buddha. But, now I'm but, praying for you guys. And we, and we pray for you. All I'm saying is, as somebody who you know went through a little something the last few weeks, 
it felt incredible. And thank you guys so much for praying for me. That right. was a beautiful Please experience. Please pray for all of I us. I never had anybody pray for me because, again, my family wasn't religious. So it's not like my parents would pray for me. It's not like I've seen people do that. And it felt really nice to know that people care about you. And I think in a hard time, like what Gordon was going through, it is... Everything is relative. If you're an NBA player, the worst thing you can imagine happening Boom. to you is you're blowing out your knee. Boom. If you're an American it. citizen, maybe it. the worst thing you can imagine happening to your country is it being divided by a very divisive president. If you're a an Israeli, maybe the worst thing you can imagine happening is a terrorist attack on Israel, right? So, like, there's levels to this shit. But to an NBA player... That is devastating, yo. Every yes. one of those players. That's a nuclear blow. bomb. Son, that's it. That's North Korea. Yes. That's why you saw all of them grimacing. That could be a career-ending injury. This guy's only 27. He's been playing basketball his whole life. Nobody wants that. This and is what they love to do. I get that. And I know that there are people in hospital beds right now who would trade with him. They'd be weaping with joy for the chance to trade with Gordon Haywood. So if you act like has, Gordon asked so to get real hurt. real quick. If somebody, when, when can you pray for someone? Because that's important. Because if somebody has titty cancer, that's pretty easy to, <laughs> to they got titty cancer, it's pretty Andrew. easy to get rid of. And then someone else got leukemia. Are we not allowed to pray for the titty cancer person because leukemia is worse? No, listen. Like, when can you I, start praying for someone, Chris? When, when somebody's when is, got herpes. Right. Can we pray for herpes? Can't cure it anyway, so hey. hey. I saw. You might as well, why, why am I wasting my prayers? It's going to be on you regardless. God's going to send a prayer to the spam folder. You got herpes. There I, it is. That's I garbage. can't pray your herpes away. It's not going to be. So when when is I don't know I don't know what the what the criteria is I just know when I saw all that last night it rubbed me the wrong way I saw all the comments people saying they're praying for you and praying for Greg well, I think that's beautiful I'm, gonna tell you I'm what. glad it helped mm -hmm. I hope the prayers are answered I saw a headline today that yeah. said uh, nuclear war could happen any moment Yeah I saw that this too. was like this was like this was like pray for that shit Who posted this shit Oh now pray for that Why because that's the worst possible thing that could happen to us. To everybody, collectively. Okay, then. So that's how the NBA feels about that motherfucking leg. That's the worst possible outcome for them. What do you think Gordon Haywood cares more about? Keep it real, right? Yeah, yeah. Keep it real. NBA players, NBA... What do you think NBA players and Gordon Haywood care more about? North Korea blowing up Guam... Or Gordon Haywood's ankle. Oh, Keep his ankle. His ankle. So that's why they're praying for that shit. They're not even and worried that's about what I'm saying. Guam. It's fucked up. By the way, we live in... No, it's not fucked up. We live in a world where things have to happen in order for us to care. If a nuclear fucking bomb hits anywhere near the United States, Facts. everybody and their mama will be like, pray for Hawaii, yeah. <laughs> or pray for, yeah. pray for Cali, yeah. or whatever. It's yeah. gonna be a collective like, oh my God. We pray after. After! I was talking to this, this, this Israeli dude the other day, we were having a conversation about, um, why is, it, why is it in times of tragedy we come together, and in, t and in times of, what's the opposite of tragedy? Success. Celebration. In, it, or success. Let's say yeah. calm. We separate ourselves. We isolate. When we're doing well, we don't want nothing to do with nobody. We don't fuck with people. We don't fuck with nobody. <laughs> You're trying to no. find ways to be alone. Exactly. How right. do I get away? You know what I mean? I'm moving to the burbs. Yes. I'm getting a, a, I'm getting a house. Rich. Yeah, motherfuckers like to say, I'm getting, people like to get money to be seen. I'm getting money so I can disappear. Get away. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Wait till so, that nuclear bomb comes. But, no, but it's an interesting, and I thought it was an interesting situation, right? It's like, in a weird way right now, America is as divided as it is. The both sides are divided, but the both sides have coalesced real strong. Yeah, the yeah, left yeah, is yeah. coming together real strong. The right is coming together real strong. And um, he he said some wild shit to me. He goes, he goes, this is how you know America is a really great place to live in. I go, what are you talking about? He goes, you have to understand, like, when when we see, like, a bad president in the rest of the world, that's every day. Your, your oh, president yeah, yeah, yeah. says some mean things. Ooh. The president of the Philippines to, is a cannibal. I was about to say, president of Philippines, <laughs> president of Philippines. Bro, he said, if my own son gets caught dealing drugs, I'm, I'm kill killing him. him. Now, on some real shit, if you judge in context, they got a drug issue out there. He's trying to clean it up. Maybe that's not the right way to go about it, but he's trying to make a difference. But the point is, like, we are so... We have such a privileged life here in America yes. that a bad president could tear a country apart when literally 90% of nations have bad presidents. You know what I'm saying? A terrorist attack in America literally tears the country uh, in half. And, and he, this is this Israeli guy going, that's everyday life for me. But that's it's because normal. America is supposed to be the greatest country in the world and people from those countries come here to escape that sure. kind of shit. Right. But, you know but what, I mean? what I'm saying is bad shit saying. is normal to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to us it isn't. So in a weird way... In a very, very weird way, the fact that we're having this visceral reaction to Trump and all these things going on really shows how amazing a life we have. Uh, yeah. duh. Yeah. And, and like, that's why, that's like, why wow. a nuclear bomb would ruin America forever. 
Life as we know it. Life as we know it yeah. will never be the same. This ain't no natural disaster yeah. where FEMA and the Red Cross going to come yeah. and clean this shit up after a couple months. Yeah. We're fucked. Yeah. For some decades. Yeah. Oh, dude. Uh, no, for real. It's like Einstein said. He doesn't know what sort of bomb's going to get dropped in World War Three, but he knows that World War Four is going to be fought with sticks and stones. Sticks and stones. Yeah. It's over. That it's was, over. That was if a fire bo- quote. Fire. Yeah. You yeah. fucking do- futuristic motherfucker. I've been doing a lot of studying yeah. about yeah. nuclear war lately. It. Yeah. Listen. Just don't let us get taken out by North Korea. Don't that think sad. that you can have a surgical strike where we drop something on them and then it's contained. If one of these things goes off, it's over for everybody. Just See, be I think, very clear th- about This that. is the problem, right? And this is what I think that uh, little Kim Jong-un is doing. Yeah. I think little Kim Jong-un <laughs> little Kim is... Jong-un. How come Cardi B didn't get more heat for that shit that she said? What's she say? <laughs> Nobody cares about right. y'all right now. Because okay. we'll get back to you. Wait, your, your, y'all. Your, your, what did, what did <laughs> we'll Cardi say about your second. people, yo? What did she Cardi- called him like wonton because something. Because it's Kim Jong-un. You can't defend all Asians if Kim Jong Un is the representation you're using. Kim Jong Un got to take that out. Yo. Now, if she said something about Lucy Liu, uh, Jackie Chan. Who's the popping Asian right now? Who's the Who's the one? They struggle. Uh, Ali Wong. Yeah, you know Ali, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If she said something about them, yeah. oh, they'd have been all over Cardi. Yeah. Kim Jong Un. Yeah. He's an asshole, so you could be mean to him. But reality, bro, is- bro, you could call OJ a nigga. I'm not calling him. You could. You could yeah, I, won't, that was I won't be saying that. I won't be using that word. That was I won't. You, you, could, quick you could call that? Bill Cosby a rapist nigga. I didn't even think about it. I didn't, yo, yo, I didn't, I didn't even give you the, like, the deer eyes. Like, really? Can I? Depending on what the person has done or how foul the person is, yeah. you can get away with a slur or two. I, I, yeah, nah, yeah, nah, I'm, I'm not going to roll the dice there. But with the, with the, the Asian thing, it's like, do they cook wontons? She called it Mr. Wontong Soup. So A, she spelled it wrong. B, wontong is a Chinese dish. It's not a Korean dish. Okay, white people get lumped in together. Black right. people get lumped in together. Are you taking a knee on Bodak Yellow now, Chris? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't don't fuck with Cardi it. Now? <laughs> what the fuck? Yo, Chris you is wilding today. Wilding today. Hey. He's protesting prayer. By protesting way, Bodak Yellow. What did we see, Paige? I, was, I stood there and watched you outside for like 10 minutes. What happened? He was just standing on the fucking corner. He was just standing there. I'm going through some... I'll talk to you guys after the show. I know. Oh, definitely. All right, get out of here, Greg. Yo, we we don't need to well, wait. Yeah. I don't know what you might you might be capable of. Go stand in the corner to the podcast. Greg is doing better, by the way. I just good, spoke to him. Good, good. Uh, and thank you guys so much for reaching out. Man, I, and, and I'll tell you something. This was the wildest thing that happened this week is not only did all these people reach out and say that uh, they really appreciate it, they were moved by the episode, so many people reached out and they said that they had brothers, cousins, a nephew, an aunt, a son, or something like that that's going through an incredibly yep. similar thing. It was shocking. Shocking! I can't even. It's mind-boggling how many people deal with these this yeah. type of mental illness and other types of mental illness, and we just don't talk about it at all. It's really Fight Club. It's everybody around. It's us because in the hood it. we chalk things up to just being crazy. Not even in the it's hood. Even in, in the, the world. Hood. Just, yeah. I'm talking to a dude from Sweden. He's saying he's going through it. A guy from London. People are giving me all these tips and how, and how to deal with it, and and especially and, in New York. Oh, bro. Bro, in New York, you see so many mentally ill people walking around the street screaming, yelling, walk barefoot, naked. you just and, like, oh, and whatever. Look, and we look the other way. And the reality is, it's like, bro, in the wrong, when you're dealing with this kind of crazy, and, and how do I explain this? When you're dealing with this kind of, when you're dealing with this kind of psychosis, I think you see a lot of them drawn to religion because the logic starts to make sense. Yeah, they just try to make sense of their of the this life. Of Why life. they feel the way they Why feel? Why do I feel these crazy yeah, things? Yeah, yeah. Because when you look on the surface to a lot of religious stories, there is a lot of crazy there. Divine intervention, seeing things that aren't there, right. hearing things that aren't there, in a lot of ways is very relatable to them. Voices. Voices. There are these voices. Well, I hear voices. I don't think there's anything wrong with crazy. You just got to control it. When it, when it, when when you get to the point where you can't control it anymore, that's mm-hmm. when it's like, whoa. Because I think we're all a little bit. Crazy, sure, like like sure. Steve Jobs said, the people that are that change the world are the ones that are crazy enough sure. to believe it. Like sure. you, ha- I hear voices all the time. Sure, it's it's again the control that you have. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. all I'm saying is I think that's why they're drawn. And then what and what often happens when you're drawn to a religious, you know, uh, a religious kind of experience or religious text, you can use it to justify your behavior. And Greg was telling me about some you know wild circumstances he was in, even with you. He said, you know, this is God, and and he thought that there was this kind of divine intervention in his life. And I think. It's one that, of those, that was divine intervention that day, though. With you, with him missing? The, yeah, I mean the whole situation. I think he needed that that day, bro. He's, because if that didn't happen, Greg's still here right now, 
and <clears throat> an incident could have happened later on that could have been way worse. You don't yeah. even. I could tell you a crazier thing that he told me on the phone that, that, that happened. Like he just got a, a message in his head, like he was listening to messages in his head. You know what I mean? Because of an instance that happened, um, and the message just told him, "Hey, run across the train tracks." And he ran across some shits and he made it to the other side and then he came back in and swiped in again and he noticed nobody cared or nobody saw anything. It's New York, baby. Son. Go do that shit where they give a fuck, Chris. Yo, but think that about shit. that. Isn't that crazy? Like, Not in New York. <laughs> no, 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 but like think about what that must be like for somebody who's already feels isolated, right? You already feel alone. You already feel like you're not connected to people. And all of a sudden you run across the train tracks, come back down the train. It's not like Greg isn't visible. My man's 6'6". Six, six. Bro, I got two stories. Lecrae. Lecrae saved a transgender woman mm -hmm. here in New York. He was in the Bronx. He actually yeah. went to the Bronx because he wanted to go see where Cardi B was from or some shit like that. Right. And the transgender woman was running her head into a pole. Like running fast and boom, hitting her head on a pole. Yeah. Running fast, hitting her head on a pole. Yeah. His boy goes, he didn't know it was a transgender woman at first. She was so training Le for that lingerie football league. So Lecrae goes, <laughs> Lecrae's like, yo, I want to help. Lecrae goes, yo, what's up? We got to go help her. The, guy, the dude from New York goes, mind your business. Just mind your business, the fucking, do, mind your business, man, the yeah. fucking Bronx, like, like, let them be, whatever, whatever. Then Lecrae said the guy went to the, like, the bridge or something. Lecrae was like, no, I got to go stop. These motherfuckers about to jump. So he stopped them, you know, mm -hmm. from saying it. But my point is, the guy with him was like, no, mind your business, when it's a dude running his head into a pole. Yeah. My second example is this. New York City. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were able to walk around in trench coats and hats. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Clear as day they were fucking turtles. But yeah. nobody gave a shit. Right? Yeah. Nobody fucking cares. Because you don't want to seem like you're prejudiced. Just, you were, Just because I look like a turtle. You, you look you suspicious. You think I'm a turtle. I, listen, I understand. What you trying to say? It's New York, man. New York. I'm going to tell you the craziest time to be in New York. Halloween. Mm. Stay your ass home. That's okay? Yeah. I remember 2009. 2009. I had just got fired. And I came to New York. And I was on the train. And I didn't realize it was Halloween. Yeah. I thought I had died and gone to hell. I literally thought I had died and the subway train was taking me to hell because the way everybody was dressed. Motherfuckers were standing around with decapitated heads and shit. Yeah, yeah, New yeah, York yeah. is a weird place on Halloween. Yeah, so literally, you could possibly really kill someone, right? Oh, absolutely. And drag the body around on New York on Halloween and nobody would pay you any attention. Absolutely. Think about all the stories you hear about people dead on the subway train. Sure. Riding around for days. Nobody even gives a fuck. Sure. New York's not the place to be crazy. No, it is a... Uh, yeah. Not if you want attention for the crazy. Yeah, or if you want help. You know what I mean? Because people aren't going to help you. They're going to ignore you. And the reality is, I get it. Because crazy people can be dangerous. You don't know their actions. You can't reason with them. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wouldn't, if, if, I, if you're somebody that sees a crazy person acting wild in the street, I wouldn't necessarily tell you to go step in. You put your life on the line in a lot of ways with that. By the way, never in New York have I ever, ever, ever intervened. Mm -hmm. I might even join in. If I'm walking down the street and you close to me and you start screaming, I'm going to start screaming too to let you know it could be two crazy motherfuckers on the sidewalk. All right? <laughs> okay. You never did that. You walk by one of you and you say, ah! You start screaming back at him. You try to out-crazy him? Yes. Uh, just to let him know. That's not a game to play. Hey, I just got to get past this block. All right? <laughs> okay? I just got to get past this motherfucking block. What about in South Carolina? Like in, in Monk's Corner, how do they deal with... Oh, we contain them. How? Short buses, low trailers in the back of the school. You don't see them after 21. You also know who they are. Like, uh -huh. when you live in a small town, you know every crazy person. Yeah, because they're in the short, they're in the trailers in the back. They're on the short bus. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You grew up with them. Oh, yeah, that's crazy Sal. That's this. I've been attacked by three crazy people in my people. life. Man. Greg was the first mentally ill person that attacked me. The first, like, I don't want to call him. We used to call him retarded back in the day, but I know that's not the proper term for him. But the I one mean, that... It is. The guy I used to tease every day. Yeah. Monday through... Sunday because he used to go to the kingdom hall with us mm -hmm. he used to tease him every goddamn day and yeah. he never would say anything and then one day he just put me in a fucking chokehold yeah. alright and then after he choked me he just walked off still didn't say shit yeah, yeah. you know what I mean and then this dude so this is a common theme in your life that people just attack you for no reason <laughs> I mean maybe there's something you're doing maybe Maybe I give up a vibe. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I have an attackable face. I don't fucking, I don't know. This dude <laughs> named Fish, Fish grabbed me one time and like we used to have these high gates so he grabbed me and put me on top of the gate and just held me there. Whoa. And I'm like, Fish, we know you're strong. You're retarded. All right? Yeah. Mitch yeah. like, we get it. All yeah. right? You don't have to prove yourself right yeah. now. And he just put me down and laughed. So it's just like, whatever. 
I can't, I, you know, keep them away from me. That's all I'm saying. It's a tough situation. It's uh, really not. I felt guilty this this week, Why? man. Because... Oh, I didn't tell you about little Kim Jong-un. Oh, tell me. My theory is he's baiting Donald Trump to strike first because North Korea knows he does not have the nuclear capabilities to strike the U.S. And they said, if who, who was it? Somebody said, I forgot what country said, if the U.S. strikes first, then they're going to have to defend North Korea. But I if hope no, it wasn't China. I don't know if it was China or... Or Japan, I don't remember. No, Russia, 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 maybe China was it Russia? Have, like, I don't know. Some interest in, yeah. in North Korea. It was one of the bigger countries that said if North Korea strikes first, they will not intervene. Right. If the U.S. retaliates, but if the U.S. strikes first, then was, then, then they're going to do something, yeah, right? I think it was China, but I think he's baiting Donald Trump to do something that's first. A theory, that's a good theory. I mean, what I read from Kim Jong Un, his statement was that uh, Trump is a um, what is it called? A not distraction. Trump is in something he's stopping a peace. A fuck boy. What's the, what's the another word for stopping? I can't think of any words. Inhibitor. Trump is an inhibitor of of peace. Mm -hmm. And uh or Trump is getting in the way of peace. Now here's a guy who's been talking about popping off, I'm going to blow up America, I'm going to do this, I'm do that for years. All of a sudden you have another dude who's just as crazy as you talking about, hey, we might have to go in there and unleash some fire and fury. Was it now you're talking about, hey, let's be peaceful. Was he popping let's shit be... all these years? Oh, yes. And I never paid no attention, shit. to be honest. And his dad. There, and his dad, I remember his talking dad. about fucking up America for years. Now you got a crazy-ass American president talking about, oh, who, who's going to fuck up? I wonder why he hates America so much but loves Dennis Rodman. <laughs> Dennis Rodman... <laughs> Dennis Rodman gave basketball. up that pussy, man. He might have. Dennis got Rodman mouth. gave up some of that boy butt, man. He, Dennis might have. <laughs> he really might have. I think Dennis Rodman and Kim Jong Un got it in, yo. I really, truly believe. I mean, once that. you're there, you gotta do whatever he says. You got once you're there, Kim Jong Un becomes Kim Jong Weinstein. I'm about right. to say. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know once, if you were gonna go. Once you're there, there. <laughs> once you're there, okay, you you, you know what you know I what got this a, is. I got a good Weinstein hypothetical for you, but real well, quick, look, I just want to say okay. I'm. I'm uh, so, so grateful for everybody that reached out. And I feel a little guilty this week because all these people reached out and uh, I said I would get back to as many as I could. And there's been a lot of people I couldn't get back to. And I know a lot of you um, were asking how to deal with mental illness or a friend or a brother or something like that is going through mental illness. And and I, and I feel a sense of guilt that I haven't been able to reach back to everybody. But um, why are you guilty? Well, because I want to I understand what it's like to go through that. And I want and I understand how helpless you could feel going through that. And I want to be able to help somebody who is going through that. So, I mean, I guess I'm going to use this time just to tell you some places you could go to get information and get help. Yeah, but it's still something that's relatively new to you, though. You're still, you're, you're still is, kind of like navigating I'm pretty territory. Been, I've, I've been like, you know, my parents have been in therapy their whole lives, and we've been very kind of open about mental health and that kind of stuff like that. So it's it's, it's something that I'm comfortable talking about. But uh, I wouldn't let Greg come home yet, though. Uh, I was no, reading, he's, he's I was reading up some shit about, like, people who get diagnosed with 5150, and then they keep them in there for, like, 72 hours, like... Nah, he's still in there. Yeah, it's, let him cool out. It's Yeah, well, first we got to figure out what's wrong. I mean, full full disclosure, we're not exactly sure what's wrong. There's a few different things that could, could be happening mm -hmm. with him. So they're doing a bunch of different tests. You know, he had high ammonia levels. and hmm. I mean, there's all these different things. High ammonia? Bro, there's so many different things that, that, that could, could have happened. So the first and most important thing is figure out what's wrong. And then you could, after you diagnose what's wrong, you could medicate it. But if you don't know what's wrong, you can't medicate it. You think it. you were sniffing like pine soil or some shit? Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> no, nah, I'm nah. serious. High nah. ammonia levels, like for real. No, 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 no. It's some, some, I don't, I don't know exactly. We're going to, we're going to figure it out. But I guess the point is there's this, there's this website you can get information at. It's NAMI.org, NAMI.org. And it's got tons of information about mental health, and I uh, implore you to go check it out. At least read up on it. You know, you can read up for yourself, for a cousin, brother, anything like that. You can keep DMing me on Instagram. Um, again, I'm not really on Twitter, and I'm going to try to get back to as many people as I possibly can. But just the more you read about it, the more you'll be able to understand, the more you'll be able to get these people help. And I guess the most important thing is getting them to talk to somebody. Because when they actually talk to somebody, hopefully they can come to the realization that they might need some help. And once they're there, that's like the hardest part. And putting them in a safe space, man. Yeah. Not just a safe space for themselves, but a safe space for everybody else, especially Absolutely. if they are prone to violence. Absolutely. If you really love your people. Absolutely. You because you don't want them to people. fucking end up killing somebody and then going to jail for the rest of their life and not getting the help they need. Now you're just a madman on a, in a prison. And that's, that ain't going to help. That's a problem. Oftentimes that's what we wait for. We wait for something drastic to happen and then we go, pray oh, for, we gotta put pray for such pray and such. For blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's like, yo, why weren't you praying before we could get a cure for this shit? <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Let's pray early now. Anyway, so that, I just wanted to say that. And then I'll, after we pay, pay this bill, bills. I got a good uh, Harvey Weinstein 
hypothetical for Well, you. this is a great segue for Harvey Weinstein because this is Me Undies. Holler! All right, and today's episode is brought to you by Me Undies. <laughs> Me Undies makes feel good undies. Your butt will be proud to wear. You think Harvey wore drawers? No, but I think he, I don't think so. I think he might. It sounds like a command. Yeah, <laughs> like a girl's in her underwear. And he goes me on these. Just give, <laughs> give me on these. <laughs> They'll be the most comfortable pair of underwear that Harvey Weinstein has ever taken off of you. Okay, and to check it out yourself, go to meundies.com/slash idiots with tons of styles and patterns to choose from for both men and ladies. Me undies will have the perfect fit for any personality. The me undies feelings is unmatched because they use a naturally soft fabric that's three times softer than cotton. Damn right, I'm wearing my me undies right now. No joke. Really? And I went to sleep in them last night. Okay. I like to do that. If I go to sleep in a pair of underwear, I'll wear it for the next day. Are they self-cleaning? No, I just keep it funky. All right. But the thing about me undies is they maintain their elasticity, so I could do that, and I don't think there was that much smell. You don't got the me undies that have the uh, first ever glow-in-the-dark print, though. Nah, they didn't send me those yet, Chris. Ooh, why not update Chris, your underwear deal, draw? man? Me undies, send them out. Let your dick of pussy glow up. All right. That's okay. What's up. That's the new STD. When you sit, it's visible at night. Yes. Scared the shit out of a girl. Why are you? Why is your dick glowing? Oh, it's that new shit. You yeah, want it? I got dark light dick. Now, if underwear isn't your thing, Me Undies also makes the softest socks in the world. Okay, to get 20% off the best and softest underwear and socks you'll ever own, free shipping and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash idiots right now. That's MeUndies.com slash idiots. All right, Harvey Weinstein. Yes. Who's creepier? Chris, you may weigh in on this as well, as you are Jewish. Who is creepier, Harvey Weinstein or Woody Allen? Ooh. He's a good one. He's a good one. Those are the number one seeds. He's a good one. When it comes to sexual assault, they're number one seeds. All right, they'll probably meet in the finals. (laughs) (laughs) Let me see. Where's the Cavs? Oh, man. You gotta gotta go, Woody. Okay, let's go with your uh, rationale. I just want to have a good little discussion. Go. And, you know, a lot depends on how much of the allegations against Woody are true. But if if you look at strictly the power dynamic, sure. the power dynamic, Not true. you're more of a predator when you're preying on children in your own family. Be they adopted, biological, doesn't matter. Does Not, it make you more of a predator? Yes. I don't that's know if it makes you more of a predator. Let him get him out. Then, that's then that's you the tell ultimate vulnerability. He's got captive prey, that's all. <laughs> well, yeah. But it's, not, <laughs> it's not even, it's livestock. I mean, <laughs> you're true. just raising it, that's right? Like, yeah, right? It's really yeah. what it is. Yeah. Right, you got baby calf, and you pr- feed it, and now you got cow. I'll send some prayers up on that one. But, I mean, the thing is... <laughs> Praying for who? Woody or... Why would you pray for Woody Allen? His happy life. Guy to no, <laughs> you don't compare little kids to livestock that are fucking getting killed. Listen, I, I, I think because of that... because say, of, It's very similar to livestock. I'm just saying because of that that element where these people, A, are around him all the time, B, they look up to him. He's literally the father figure, Right. right? To me, Creepy. makes it worse. Okay, Sean. Yeah, Harvey's the exact same way, though, because Harvey is... So you go Harvey? I mean, it's tough because Harvey was, what, 40-something years old. These, like, Gwyneth Paltrow was, like, 19 when this stuff was happening. Okay. You know, the power dynamic is Hollywood. Hollywood, you're 19 years old. You want to be a big superstar. You're with Harvey Weinstein. He is like a father figure. You don't want to let him down. You know, if you don't do what he wants, then he won't put you in this movie. He won't put you in this film. It's essentially the same thing. It's an older guy preying on a younger woman Hmm. and using a different type of power to get what he wants. Woody's Hmm. just using the power of being a father figure or whatever. Harvey's just using the power of being the big executive in Hollywood. I don't, I don't, I kind of agree with Chris because it is kids. But yo, when of them were kids to him too? At 40-something years old and the girl's 19? But like when it's it not- happens, and I noticed this, when it happened, a lot of the women said, who do they go back to to talk about it? Mm. Their parents. Yeah. So they still have that support. They so still have who, that. Who do you think the kids talk to? Parents, Chris, are a guardian. What are you talking about? Well, he's saying Woody, Woody is the Woody's parent. The well, parent. you go tell the mom. Now, if you go tell the mom and the mom's like, hey, that's just the way things are in this house. Yeesh. Yeesh. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know. Neither is a good situation. And the Woody Allen thing is, do you believe that he just, that he actually, you know, abused, I think it was his biological child, or I'm gonna say did Har- he only marry his stepdaughter, which still is like... I'm going to say Harvey's more creepy. So you go Harvey. And, right. only, and then another reason I'm going to say Harvey's more creepy because of the numbers. Woody, what, messed with the girl and then married her? So as far as we know, he was with... Well, I'm sure he was with more, but as far as we know, he was with one. Right. So if I got to go numbers, I got to go Harvey. So... So Harvey, Woody, okay, my my take is this. My first knee-jerk reaction was Harvey because of numbers, mm-hmm. right? And my boy brought up a very good a point. He was like, there are thousands of Harvey Weinsteins. Absolutely. The head exec of, of movie companies, music companies, 
oil companies. The guy who grabbed Terry Crews' dick. The guy who grabbed Terry, just fucking casting directors. There are tons of men that are in power that are going to be doing creepy things. What Woody Allen did is specifically creepy. Right. Right? Like, and the one saving grace for Woody Allen is that he's still with her. Right? If he just if he just hooked up with her a little bit, then they got divorced and moved on, we'd be like, this guy's a creep. But he might have found his soulmate. It's it's mm. not He has that sliver. There's a sliver of hope be. that if you really truly believe there's one person in the world that's made for you, right. it just so happens that he adopted. He had to red shirt her. He did, it just so happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's that one sliver of hope. But that being said, it is wildly creepy that you didn't even acknowledge the fact that your wife adopted because the wife adopted the kid and not Woody, and they did the yeah. uh, the girl didn't live in the same house as Woody. But you're not even acknowledging how weird and odd that is from public perception. Whereas Harvey, there are tons of dudes that are just as creepy as Harvey. I still got to give it to Harvey. You know who else I give it to? We don't talk about this guy much. Darren Sharper, yo. Oh, but he's a straight rapist. Though. I know, but I'm going to tell you why he was so creepy. Because he was good looking. Girls liked him. Mm. He could have gotten pussy. Yeah. But you still chose to drug women and sleep with them. Yeah. That is, that is a different level of creepy. Harvey. That's I, how you know you love rape. Yeah, yeah, you're committed to it. You are committed. Nah, to rape. you're a real rapist. Something's really wrong with you. Like you're. Yeah. I believe Darren Sharper is mentally ill. Like if Darren Sharper would have told us he's suffering from some psych psycho psychological yeah. damage or yeah. he'd have uh, played crazy or whatever, yes. I would believe it because it really makes no sense. You're an NFL player. You, you can get got, pussy whenever you want. You got money and you you look. Girls like Darren Sharper. You yeah. know who Darren Sharper is, Paige? Yeah. Did you think he was attractive? Attractive you know, enough to get laid like as a. Doesn't matter. Paige did tell me. She, come here, Paige. No, I want to tell. I need to talk to her about this. No, okay, real quick, real okay, quick. Real quick. But, but come here, come here. But she but, said something the other day. We need to discuss. Real quick, real right. quick. Uh, just on the Darren Sharper thing. So he's a guy who can get laid, chooses to rape. Yes. Where there's certain guys that let's say they 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 don't uh, they do like burglary when you're not around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Darren Sharper robs you on the street. That's what I'm saying. Like he takes your wallet, yo. That, so, so, so th that guy's crazier, right? That guy is so crazier. So to me, Darren Sharper is more creepier than Weinstein and, I mean, Bill Cosby. Because even Bill, Bill ain't the most attractive guy in the world. So you probably would have to drug a few supermodels, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> to get the, I'm serious. Like, he's not a, he's not an attractive guy. Right, right. Like, Harvey Weinstein's not an attractive Hideous guy. Like, Hideous. Hideous. That's what I'm Hideous. saying. Woody Allen? Like, come on. Darren Sharper. This is interesting. Is a good, good looking guy. So the psychosis is more with Darren Sharp. That's all you're trying to say. Yes, it's like yeah, Michael B. Jordan yeah, yeah. drugging women. Yeah. And fucking them. Yes, 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 yes. Segway. Yes. He would never do that. Yeah. Okay. Paige said she wants to eat Michael B. Jordan's ass. <laughs> I, 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 I overheard her. Like it's Michael B. Jordan's ass. I overheard her talking to Taylor, who yeah. works here, and she was like, I'd eat Michael B. Jordan's I, ass. I didn't say that. He, She was, set it up. She was like, if he asked you, would you eat his ass? I said, I would do anything he asked me to do. No, she said, absolutely, I would eat his ass. And then she well, said, you would eat his ass. And I was, I like, was yeah, shocked. I would. Why wouldn't you eat his ass? He's the only one. He's the only one. But why is that weird to eat ass? I don't know, because it's Paige. Paige is like a daughter to me. So it's like, why would you say such a thing? But bro, I would, one I would, day, to be fair, your daughters are going to eat ass, bro. No, I know. That's just a reality I've of matter. I've never eaten ass, and I never will unless it's Michael B. Jordan. You don't. There's nobody else's ass, ass that you would eat. You, by the way, she's eating ass. You don't just make that Ew. statement. I'll eat ass, and she said it emphatically. You don't make that statement so emphatically. <laughs> Let me tell you, if something. you've never eaten ass, if you're willing to date a guy that plays for the Browns, you're willing to eat ass. Okay? <laughs> Why do you think they're called the Browns? That's the fact. <laughs> that is the fact. They're called the Browns because you're eating that brown. Ass either. All right. Oh, you and said his name. Well, hello, Carl. Okay. Hi, Carl. Okay. Good morning, Carl. Good his afternoon, name, Carl. Said his name on here Good evening, Carl. I've never said Carl's name on this podcast, but hello, yeah. Carl. Since big neck, Carl. That's big neck, call. Carl. Big neck. All right. Oh, his neck is huge. Oh, big neck. Big his neck. neck is huge. How big is his ass? Got a big butt too, I think. Oh. Is Only that... Michael B. Jordan. I would never eat anyone else's ass. Well, uh, Michael Why? B. Jordan. I don't understand that. And Why? the B stands for brown. I love him. Michael. <laughs> Does it stand for butthole? <laughs> <laughs> Michael, oh, Michael uh, if you're out there, you know Black Panther will be out uh, February. I'm sure you'll be coming by the Breakfast you know Club where to, find to me. do some promotion. I got a nice little white Becky here. You know mm. what I'm saying? That's down to eat ass. <laughs> All right. Mm. If you want your ass eaten, you know. If you, if you, you oh know. My God. By the way, oh my God. By, oh my God. by the way, oh my God. by the way. Oh my God. By the way 
Everybody at Paige. Front page is her Instagram. F O R N T P I A G E. Put that doodle emoji in that tongue. And a tongue. A doodle emoji. Put that doodle emoji in that tongue. All right. If you if you had any doubts about Paige being a Becky, she has proved it. No, right. eating one ass. <laughs> How many asses can you eat before you're a Becky? You're not a Becky oh, for eating ass. I haven't eaten any yet. You, first of all, yes, you have. Becky suck dick. Boobies eat ass. You're a booby? You're a booby. <laughs> Are you a booby? No, you're a Betty, a Betty, a Betty, a Betty. Betty's a eat ass. Listen, there's <laughs> nothing wrong with eating ass, but don't go back on your laptop. There's nothing wrong with eating ass. Okay? No, you're not you're not working. We're talking to you about eating ass. She's about to Google the health benefits of eating ass. Yeah. <laughs> no, listen, <laughs> she's, she's committed. You know, imagine, it's like kombucha. There's tons of live cultures in there. It's very healthy. There's antioxidants. It helps with your skin. Your skin looks great. Does it not look great? It definitely is not from the air in Cleveland. It's definitely not from the air in Cleveland. Paige. I just, we need to stop ass eating shaming. I eat ass. Oh, did I tell you this the other day? You got your ass eaten? No, but what? I wanted it. What happened? Oh my God, dude. What happened? I received, I received fellatio, the best blowjob I've ever had in my entire life. Really? Son, this was Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Dude. You've had a lot of stress on your mind lately. A I lot of, think it a had lot to things, do with Exactly. It. Was it the physical aspect of her head being that great or was it everything you're dealing with in your life and it was just a stress relief? Bro, it was all of it. Dude, <laughs> I don't know, dude. Dude, Sharla, I can't believe really? I forgot to tell you guys this. Dude, I think I even told you this Who in the was next she? morning. I can't say. But, you know, I, don't, I, listen, well, so I rarely talk about my... Black, white, Spanish? She was a mix of a lot of things. Okay. So I, I, don't, um, I, don't, I don't usually talk about my, my sexual life. You know what I mean? And this is not saying that the other girls I might have slept with were not good. This was other... Trans woman? World, worldly. No, no, not mixed with that. Okay. <laughs> not that mixed. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Like, 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 like they say gay guys give the best no, jobs. No, no, no. I mean, I know was... the trans women aren't gay, but no, you know. This, she's OG. Yeah. OG woman. Yeah. Um, O.W., original woman. Okay. So I was getting a blow. All right, she starts blowing me. It, bro, it is like. Come on, set the scene. Okay. Now, where, where were you? In my bed, which is on the, the mattress is on the ground because okay. I'm, I'm grown up. Instagram model style. Yeah, Instagram right. model style, just on the ground. <laughs> okay. We She comes over, it's like five in the morning. Mm. Comes over, you ask for a beer, we're drinking a little bit. Were you intoxicated in any way? I was a little bit intoxicated. High, drunk? No, or? no, just a little drunk, just okay. a little drunk. Like 5 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, she's coming over after. Early in New York, sir. She's 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 dressed very um very uh, conservatively. Mm. You know, not really showing any breasts or anything like that. Very nice body, but dress coming down to the knees. Nothing like oh, that. She's that blowjob snuck up on you then. Bro, it's snuck you, up out of nowhere. No way. It was like Greg. You wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> you wasn't, you wasn't, no, you she wasn't gave me the can that. I get a drop blowjob. Yeah, 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 For yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. So all of a sudden, we start making out a little bit on my bed. She's on top of me. She's riding. It's very timid. She has glasses on. She looks like a librarian. It's no out of nowhere. All of a sudden, she I do my move, which is I put her on her back and I start fingering her, and then I walk my my dick up to her mouth, and then I drop my dick in her mouth. You know, very classic move. Mm. You know what I mean? She's in the mood. She's into it. She start blowing. Then she puts me down. So you didn't ask for consent to put your dick in her mouth. Well, that was what the fingering was. Oh, okay. Yeah, got gotcha. you. Now you're in the mood. All right. Consent. Got gotcha. you. Right? Isn't that how consent I, works? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I'm listen, married. I haven't asked I just pulled the dick time. close, and then she had to do the okay. rest. You know what I mean? Gotcha. So she pushed me on my back. She starts, first of all, she spits right in my mouth. And I go, what? <laughs> first of all, I'm usually the spit in the mouth guy. I oh. enjoy a spit in the mouth. But she spits in my mouth, and I take it, and I swallow it. I go, okay. Oh. We, you know what it felt like? It felt like the last click before the roller coaster goes down. You know yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. You're to go deep. Okay, bro. She, she starts going in, dude, spitting on basket weave there. technique. I saw your basket hands. Basket weave. There's okay. saliva coming off of her, off of her uh, tongue, mouth, still connected to the dick. Mind you, she didn't take her clothes off. It was no, no. She was naked at this. Okay, point. okay. Bungee cord saliva. Boom, boom, boom. Bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. Going down. Dra -da 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 -da. I'm like this. I'm looking around. I'm looking outside. I'm looking for someone to make eye contact with, yeah, so yeah, that yeah. they could see what's happening with yes. me, so I could share this experience, yes, yes. right? This goes going, going, going. There's saliva fucking flying all over the place. I'm feeling so good. She starts sucking on my balls, but I never liked that before. But this was different. It was I really love my suck. balls. Sucks. I was loving the sucking on the balls. Yeah. And all of a sudden, while I'm getting my balls sucked, out of nowhere, this little voice in my head goes, Andrew, you need to get your ass ate. 
you need to get your ass ate right now. Okay. So I'm getting my ball suck, and I don't feel confident enough to tell her to eat my ass. You so tune it, it up a little. I just start raising my butt. A little tooted and booted. That's all. It's a little tooted and booted. I just booted. start raising up a little. A little tooted and booted. I tooted and booted. That's all a little tooted and booted. I tooted and booted, That's all a little tooted. Bro, I tooted it. She did a little lick of the taint, but then just went back down to the, to the dick. Blew it. I finished. It's all over my stomach, all over. It was just, it was just crazy. Amazing. Did you compliment her afterwards? Did you tell her? I gotta call her. Yes, I think it's very, oh, I, I think I it's very her, important to tell her. a woman when she does a great job. Oh my god, women, I probably did. Yes, women, same thing when it comes to. I men. got her an Uber that was like a hundred dollars or something like that to go home. What the fuck? Is she go Connecticut? Shit, I don't know. But Listen, when hard. women, when women do a good job giving you head, and you do a good job giving a woman head, compliment each other. Oh my god. Give me, give me, give me some, give me some credit. Listen, well, I just told a quarter million people right. Right now that you give amazing head. Yes. I mean, it was. She was an Uber was, driver. What would her rating be? There's not enough stars. She's a constellation. Okay. Ooh, She's the big dipper. Ooh, That's what she is. Not five stars. It was, and I've gotten a lot of head in my life. Wow. Okay. And I've gotten what I thought was absolutely incredible head. This was a, I mean, it's five in the morning. I don't yeah, even yeah, want to yeah. be up. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I'm yeah, tired. Yeah. I want to be yeah, asleep. Yeah, yeah, I'm 33. Yeah. I go yeah. to sleep. Yeah. This was, I'm woke. And then you know what she did? She was like, put on a condom. This is right after I nut. Now, Schultz is one time Schultz. Okay? I don't fuck more than once a week. I don't mm. I like maybe twice a week. I definitely don't do two nuts once in one night. Schultz. Once Schultz. Once Keith Schultz. Yeah. My dick looked like the shit outside the car dealership, you know that goes like this. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, that yeah, little, yeah, yeah. That yeah, little yeah, air yeah. thing yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. right? Bro, she put the condom on and I knew it was a matter of time. It was like the sand coming out of the the little uh whatever that shit is, the vial, the, the shit the got clock. Back hard? Son, it was no, it was still a little hard. And she just wrote it, and then I had to tap out because I, I didn't I didn't want to go soft inside yeah, and like yeah, lose yeah, a condom yeah, yeah. or whatever like that. And I started worrying. But, oh, my God, it was like I was so indebted to her for that blowjob. Text her right now I, and tell her, yo, man, I didn't tell you this the other night, but that was the best blowjob I ever had in my life. Because you, cause you know what that means? The second blowjob she gives you <laughs> is going to be better Even than the Even better, you what? think? You're giving, her con you're giving her positive reinforcement? You're telling her she was amazing? Bro, Listen, it was. God bless whoever that head monster is, man. God bless her. I got it. I wish her the her, best okay. in life. Okay. Listen, me too. Now let's pay some bills. Yeah. Uh, thanks again to Squarespace for supporting this week's show. Make your business stand out by building a beautiful website with Squarespace. Showcase your work, blog, or publish content. Even sell products and services of all kinds in just a few clicks. Customize everything from look and feel to settings and products, not to mention everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box. And with over 200 extensions to choose from, Squarespace offers a new way to buy domains. Best of all, there's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. But if you do have a question, Squarespace's award-winning 24-7 customer support is there to help. Head to squarespace.com today to sign up for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code IDIOT to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com. Offer code IDIOT, I-D-I-O-T. A dream is just a great idea that doesn't have a website yet. Make yours a reality with Squarespace. Who's Jared? Oh shit! I forgot about him. Yeah, bring him in. That's right. We gotta get. I thought he was doing flagrant too. <laughs> All right, tell him. Tell him. Come on. Yeah, he come right in. Yo, everybody, go listen to Flagrant Two. By the way, man, number one sports podcast in the world. I want you guys to listen to that shit. Okay. Um. Yeah, you can get it. Uh, Flagrant Two, no easy buckets. You can get it on Spotify. You can get it on iTunes. You can get it on SoundCloud. All that stuff. It's Akash Singh, myself, and uh, real life Kaz. Kaz is brilliant, man. Kaz is great. Kaz Salute to Kaz. I'm Akash all, is hilarious. These guys are great. Man. I'm always looking for great. Kaz. Uh, I'm always looking for opportunities for Kaz. Like, I used to use Kaz on Uncommon Sense a yep. lot. I got an idea for him. Talk to me. No, no, it's a show on EPN, and uh, I, I threw his name in as a host. I don't know if they've contacted him yet, but you know, Kaz, is, Kaz is brilliant. Kaz is hilarious. Yo. He just don't look like he's hilarious. No, he's lit, but he's also, he's got a great mind. Like, he's got he a does. great marketing mind. He does. I, I think he does. that, yeah, I, I, I really trust in his uh, decisions. And it, it reminds me of you in a lot of ways, too. Like, I trust in your marketing decisions. Not a lot of people I defer to. Yeah. Right? There's, you. I think you can really tell when you respect somebody is, like, when, when instead of, like, saying we should do this, you go, well, what do you think about this? Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, know, you I mean? build ideas up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, so, Kaz is a good dude. I like Kaz a lot, man. Salute to my guy, Kaz. And, yeah, man, you guys just got to go listen to that shit. That shit is hilarious. And then we're coming back uh, this next week with uh, The Stranger Things. We're going to do a recap for for Western Bros. We're going to do a recap. And then um, we're going to do the whole binge season of Stranger Things the week, the following week. So make sure you guys check that shit out. You might as well get some dates Western right now, too. Oh, yeah, do it, do it. I'm going to be, we'll be in Milwaukee uh, next, next Saturday. October 28th. 
October 28th, yeah. yeah. This Saturday, I'll be at the University of Kentucky. I'll be there at 3 p.m. in Memorial Hall. We're going to have a nice, yeah, we'll have a nice conversation about the intersection of education, media, and entertainment, uh, and power, influence, and race in America. So I'll be talking there. It's free admission. Saturday, October 21st, Memorial Hall, 3 p.m., University of Kentucky. I'll see you there. And then next week, we'll be in Milwaukee at the... Uh, Podcast Festival, right? That's right, Milwaukee Podcast Festival. We're going to be doing that. Um, you can come check me out in Chicago, November 4th through 7th at Zanies, and I'm going to be in um, New York. Make sure you check it out, November 9th. I was just in Chicago, man. I was Gotham in Chicago. Gotham Comedy Club. I was Make in- sure you check it out. Get tickets for that right now. One show, Gotham Comedy Club, November 9th. Go. I, no, I was in Chicago this past weekend. This Saturday, we had a Men's Empowerment Summit. It yeah, what is me, that about? Sway, D-Nice. It was actually dope. Uh, mm-hmm. Dougie Fresh. Dougie Fresh is brilliant. Uh, we No women allowed? No women allowed. <laughs> it, was, it was all men. It was it was grown men like us having a conversation with these young guys, uh, and it was actually dope because it's the- <laughs> priests. <laughs> <laughs> but it was dope. Though. It was a good conversation to be had. Like you know, it's just it's amazing how we always focus on all the young kids that are doing nothing and being negative. And, and not not uh-huh. fo- not focusing on the kids that are positive and yep. actually doing something. All the kids in Chicago who may be in these bad environments but want to do more. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yep. it was a great conversation. And I had a real lesson mm. in integrity this week. What happened? I was driving to Is this on the Chicago thing? No. Can I can I make one comment yeah, about what you just uh-huh. said? The um I wonder if it would be more influential to show the young kids to give the young kids that are doing great things just as big a platform as the young kids that are doing horrible things. Yeah, because then you influence the young kids that are doing horrible things. You go, they start going, oh shit, I don't need to be in this gang. Oh, I could be doing the same things that that kid is doing. He's from my same neighborhood and he's doing all this positive shit. You're right. Shit. But the problem is, we as a society reward bad behavior. And we don't even realize we reward it because we think of rewards as being a monetary gain. Yeah. But no, a lot of motherfuckers just want attention. Bro, so we reward negative behavior all the time. We reward negative behavior way more than we reward positive behavior. I wonder if we, if we just made a conscious effort to reward positive behavior, if that influence alone would be enough to change. I had to unfollow. I believe so. I had to unfollow uh, Vlad TV on 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 Instagram because it was just so many negative stories. After it was like, mom puts kids in the oven. <laughs> I can only look at so many mom puts kids in the oven. You know what I mean? I have a comment. I ain't talked to my guy Vlad in a while. I think he's upset because when I was on the Joe Budden podcast, I, I was saying why well, I don't really like to do Vlad anymore. But yeah. it's just like I I do got to have a conversation with Vlad. That's my guy. I just don't like the negativity. Let me be totally honest with you. Like, I, I just don't want to be a part of it. Like, and I'm not saying that, you know, our platforms are the most positive platforms in the world, but yeah. it's just like, there's no balance. Yeah. <laughs> like, none. You know what I'm saying? Like, zero. Like, nah. I ain't with that. But um, I, had a, I had a lesson in integrity this week, man, because I was um, driving to Newark Airport. I had to do a book signing in the airport. Mm-hmm. Uh, I suited my guy, Stephen Furtick. Stephen Furtick came through Pastor Stephen Furtick. He was on his way to Israel with some people from his congregation, his wife and whatnot. And he, you know, he's from Monk's Corner. Got a big mega church in Charlotte, but he he came by the book signing. But I was driving to Newark and I kind of got rerouted. It was just like one of those things where I just took a wrong turn. It was like I was lost. I just took a, a wrong turn. So, and when I took this wrong turn, I ended up on this uh, street where it was some traffic and it was a woman walking with uh, a cup in her hand. You know what I'm saying? She was collecting change, collecting money. And so um, I, gave her, I gave her some money. You know what I mean? I gave her a nice, nice bill. And, you know- Undo? Huh? Undo? 50. Give it 50. 50 solid. And then, then I, I I drove off. I didn't have no change, though, to be honest with you. But I gave it, well, that was a 50, so I gave it to her, whatever. Right. So I'm driving, and I I drive, and I, I drive up a little bit, and I get caught in traffic again. So somebody knocks on my window. I look, it's the same lady. And the lady goes, yo, I think you gave me too much money. And I'm like, no, I didn't. It was like, you sure you didn't make a mistake? I'm like, no. Mm. And she's like, God bless you. And I sat there and I thought to myself, now, this woman is out here panhandling, or possibly homeless, I don't know, but whatever. She's panhandling in the middle of Newark, New Jersey. She got a $50 bill. Mm. She could have easily just tucked that. She came and knocked back on my window to ask me if I made a mistake. Mm. That's integrity. That's great character. And mm. I think we all should strive to have that kind of character. Think about how many people pee what and don't. You, what were you wearing? I was driving. No, but clothes, what were you wearing? Oh, I don't know. You think there was part of her that was looking at you like, yo, he might need this. 
<laughs> I don't know if I can take all this fifty. <laughs> I just I just respect that. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like like when I pee, I wash my hands after I pee. Right. And if I don't wash my hands, I'm not gonna shake your hand. Right. Cause that just shows a lack of integrity to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, I just yeah, respect yeah. integrity. So I'm just saying that young woman had integrity. Yeah. Now we got a guest in the building. Uh introduce yourself, my brother. My name's Jared. Jared Odrick. This motherfucker is huge. Jesus Christ. <laughs> God. Yeah. And it doesn't help the chairs all the way oh up, Oh, my too, God. So. I was looking at a Maybe picture of Bigfoot yesterday. You can, you can move. I saw a jacket Well, you were in Northern it, so California sure. recently? They just spotted Bigfoot in Northern California. Yeah, I saw that. Jesus I saw that. Jesus Christ. You might How be big able to drop you, the seat. Yeah, I don't think it goes down. I How think big I'm are just, you? I'm sitting up here for the rest of the time. Uh, Probably about 6'5", probably 300 pounds. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Offensive lineman? No, D lineman. That's a smack in the face. Oh, O lineman aren't, aren't aren't athletic. They're not. Uh, no, I mean some are, and those are the. My God, Dwayne's ones. athletic. Dwayne Brown, you know Dwayne Brown. Yeah, he's athletic. He's athletic. He's what about BJ Raji? Yeah, they call them dancing bears. Yeah, yeah. yeah. BJ yeah. Raji's a D lineman, right? So no, I thought he played. Oh no. Oh uh -uh. BJ Raji's a D tackle. Wow. Yeah, what team yeah. did you play for? I played for the Miami Dolphins and the Jaguars. Jacksonville. Okay. Yeah. I read out to Duval. Well, well, Zach is here. I read a, a brilliant uh, article that he wrote. Uh, Paige sent it to me. And it was just about, you know, uh, Colin Kaepernick and his take on the whole situation with the taking the knee and all kind of good stuff. But I'll, I'll let you explain. Yeah, I mean, it was, I woke up pissed off one morning, like most mornings. And, uh, yeah, there was a lot more that I wrote about that morning that I woke up and I felt, you know, inclined to, Text myself. That's how I write all the things that I'm thinking at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'll send a text message to myself. Right. And through that text message, you know, I'll dissect it and maybe try to send it to a few people and see what they think. And so I had sent it to some people at one publication and they were down to uh, edit it and, and, and create something from it. And then it got to a point of editing where they were uh, not cool with it all of a sudden. And so then I went somewhere else and Sporting News and I were able to work it out. But it was me waking up reading some headlines, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, which you probably shouldn't do as soon as you wake up, but... Uh, yes, you should pray first. Yeah, right? Yeah. But, um, yeah, maybe you can teach me something about that. But, um, yeah, I was walking to brunch, and I started texting myself after looking at Ray Lewis headlines and Donald Trump headlines, and I just feel like there's so many people that end up talking about this over and over again, selling it so hard, but they're missing the mark, and that they don't actually take any time to listen to themselves or other people. Mm -hmm. And so I guess that's kind of what I wanted to get out there is that, you're going to be continually missing the mark if you want to be heard instead of felt. And there was a bunch of other things in there that, you know, I wanted to include that a lot of people thought I should have broken up into multiple articles, but I kind of wanted it to be my thought. Can you give from the gist day. of the Yeah, what do you think the mark is? Hasn't? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's talking about a conversation amongst us as Americans. It's talking about who we idolize and the empty statements that they end up making mm. that, uh, you know, somebody will retweet, you know, LeBron's statement or Michael Jordan's statement on something because they're LeBron and Mike. But they're empty statements. There's nothing that that's behind that. There's no conversation that that spurred that statement. There's no research that spurred that statement. There was no readings. Mm -hmm. There was no dialogue that spurred any of that. And people are willing to retweet it. And and if we're going to validate those things, then we're, we're going to validate the president, right? In the way that he is interacting and handling the country and essentially us. So the thing is, is that by validating these empty tweets and validating these empty statements made by sports stars or whomever else that feel like they have something to say, we're validating the president in the way that the, he's interacting with us. So behind we validate Twitter empty rhetoric figures. and empty thoughts, basically. Yeah. What makes a statement empty? The lack of introspection, the lack of getting away from the groups that end up shouting this or that uh, and having an understanding for yourself, having some type of uh, cultivated individuality through your thoughts. It's what we talked about earlier. Remember how we talked about how we don't like to just tweet anymore because, right. you know, like, a, like a, tweets are just empty thoughts. They're your first reactions right. to things. It's like it's more emotional than actually strategically right. thought out. Yeah, no, that make that makes perfect sense. I just, I guess, what I'm wondering is like, how can we be so confident that somebody who does make a statement hasn't put that time in? Well, read it. What is it saying? Yeah, go I, read the tweets. You use LeBron you, as an example in the article, and I was like, he's absolutely right because I could not understand for the life of me why LeBron saying you're a bum, and then just like doing that Instagram rant where he was like, it's finally hitting close to home for me because he's coming at stuff. I'm like, why are we acting like D Barack Obama said this? That's what I'm saying. It's, right. it's like connect. If you can connect those dots, then 
I'm here to be educated today. But I think that was something that it, there's no dots connecting. I think people see the dots that, that people connect are, well, he's famous. Yeah. He's saying something and it's a rebuttal to this, you know, Cheeto that I don't like. So, yeah, like he's a bum. I agree. Yeah. You agree with it because it, it, it uh, reinforces whatever narrative you have about Trump or whoever. And right. which isn't really saying much because it's it's a it's a shouting match. And that's what I, I spoke about where it's it's. You know, we can talk for an hour about elite quarterbacks, right? You know, is he a lead or is he not a lead? What's a lead? Well, how do we, you know? But then we're not willing to do anything but shout or, you know, go back and forth and banter about, you know, our country. And I guess what I I, I said at the end of it is is that uh, there's, with how many people that you come across that are, that are like, uncomfortable with being psychoanalyzed, mm. right? In being torn apart or going back to their childhood, going to these dark, sensitive places that a lot of people don't like to go to. Mm. I mean, you can say the same thing for our country because that's what's needed here, mm. right? It's an understanding of the root cause, understanding of what we came from, understanding how we got to this point. And that's what I tried saying. And there's a lot of things that were taken out of the article that I guess were a bit too graphic, but... I think one of the things that, and I say it in the article, that this country doesn't respect is is black bodies. Because the thing is, is that this country was built off of black bodies. Black we, bodies were livestock. We're, we're here <laughs> because literally of that. Livestock. Absolutely. And yeah. so one of, the, one of the critiques of the first uh, edit or the first publication that I was trying to go through with my article was, was like, well, you know, you can't really say it like this because, you know, what happened when it was like all white guys in the league? You know, were, were they being exploited? I'm like... Well, it wasn't a billion dollar industry then. Mm. And it wasn't what it meant then that it means now to America. Right. It's not a, it's not it wasn't such an outlier for America as it is now. Mm. So, like, uh, you, you, you can't say the, that that's you irrelevant. Think the players are being exploited and not ex- you yourself as a player. You well, when you look at no, 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 when you look at the NBA. Right. And you see people being involved like Magic or Jordan with ownership. Mm-hmm. Right. And having a stake in the game. Mm -hmm. And there's, you don't feel that there's as much of yourself or that you can be yourself or that you have stake in the game. Like LeBron, I'm sure, is going to own a team one day. But that's all economics, though. I mean, I'm sure it would be an NFL player who would own a team if you could afford to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And, and, And I think, but I think that's a part of it, right? Is, is kind of understanding, uh, where you are as an individual and, where you are or what you individually bring to an organization into a collective league and how valuable you actually are. And I think there's a lot of people and especially young black men that don't understand their value. That if they were to stop playing, like this whole thing would collapse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I compare it, I think in my head every day and, you know, I mean, rain me back if you need to rain me back. But I think every day, like if, if all the black athletes stopped playing major sports and like we'd have, that'd be the beginning of the new civil war. Right. It's the same thing as, you know, I feel it's similar, maybe not the same thing, but, you know, uh, obviously sports are being paid. What's that? You said civil war. Where would the war come into play at? From economics. Okay. You think so? You think that people are watching the sport because of the athletes, not because of their tribe? Because of the athletes, not because of their tribe? Like, I think people watch sports because it's tribal, right? It's like, I'm from New York, so I'm a Knicks fan, no matter who's on the team. Right, nah. and but I you think, can you can admit it's more exciting when it, the Knicks are winning. The nineties, everything's I, more exciting. That's when what it's I'm winning. saying. But, but if like, nobody's dunking, then <laughs> <laughs> if nobody's dunking the ball, Guys, do, you, do you think New York stands up for the? I can dunk. <laughs> Chris that's Porzingis dunks. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have a very weird view of white people if you assume that they can't dunk. Bro. You know what I mean? Like, there ain't too many dunking white guys. I dunk. Nah, but I'm talking about dunks, not the WNBA type. Your second bro. guy was seven foot four. He's as tall as the rim. That's how tall we got to be to dunk. Well, you know. But look, <laughs> the the point. I guess the point that I'm trying to make is, I I think your argument holds up if people really only cared about the talent. But we know teams that are god awful. That people still fill the stands up every single every single night. The Knicks, for example, they're god awful. So if people were going just for talent to watch a game, then nah, your point would make sense. But they don't go for talent. They go because they identify as the team. That's why college sports are so successful. Ninety nine percent of college athletes aren't good enough to play pro ball. They they on a prof- professional level they just suck. It's only a on few a professional teams level that have that kind of uh, cachet though. 
only a few, like Dallas Cowboy fans showing up no matter what, Knicks fans showing up no matter what. Sure. Maybe Yankees fans. Yeah. Maybe. Like, it's not too many teams that have that Yankees, kind of cachet absolutely. where you're going to show up regardless of who's in the uniform. Yeah, but it has to do with, I guess my point is it has to do with identity, right? And the teams have to lower ticket prices and shit. Nah, in certain situations, the ticket price. I've been a Knicks season ticket over the last two years, and they're killing us. Y'all like abuse. We do like abuse. Yeah, that's all. That's, we that's really all do. I is. guess my my point is, you could you could make the argument like let's all let's take all black people out of sports and see if that would if that would affect. It the game. definitely would. It's not. It, it, that's are not you, even are, an argument. Are you questioning that it may or may not? Oh, it would definitely affect the skill of level of the game. They don't even would like when LeBron affect, sits out in his suit now. Would like, it affect the amount of people that go see the game? Uh, I think it would affect black people watching the game. Would it affect? Let's check attendance when they had the NFL boycott. I think NFL it, I think it depends. On, I think it depends on the attendance of the game. Like if let's let's look at the people that go look at the game. Like what percentage of the people that are watching the game that are buying tickets? Like I think that's I think that's where you'd really see. It definitely would have. Could they attendance. create stars? Could they create new stars? Could they market it? Could no. they do these things? You don't think so? It would affect attendance. It would affect viewership. Either. Yeah, not with the. It'd be a direct, there'd be too much of a shift. Yeah, it'd be... Basketball more so than football. My feeling is with football, there's only like six people that play in the league that people know. Nobody knows football players. Like, linemen, no, nobody course. knows. I mean, that's why Odell's got to bleach his hair, so he's recognizable. Right? Well, yeah, he's not and doing he's got to take his he helmet off. Well, yeah, that's a part of it, he's right? He's never got to, If he but could I play without his helmet, he would. No, no, that's, that's, that's an important part that, you know, that I end up bringing up in conversation a lot of the time is... Is you know the face mask is a benefit to the league, but a detriment to the player, Facts. right? And it's a benefit to the league because it keeps a collective, right? It keeps the collective profit theirs, right? You are a piece of the NFL. You are a representative of the NFL. Mm-hmm. You never get to be an individual. It's right? UFC versus boxing. Yeah, it's like boxers, like yo, it's all about me. I don't care about these belts. Mayweather doesn't even fight for a belt. It's a hundred million. Yeah, yeah. Cut the check. But in UFC, it's like, hey, the brand is really strong. The badge, or what is that? The way you call it? the shield. The shield yeah, yeah. Is, is is really strong. It's a with football. It's really difficult, man, because there's no one player on the field that can actually affect the game. No, it's very true. When it comes down to that, yeah, I think that's one thing too. Is that uh, for a long time I felt that in terms of the way that I spoke up or represented myself, it's like, well, hey, I'm a I'm a lineman. You know, what should I be saying or doing? And that's a part of that football culture. Mm. You know, is like if you're not scoring touchdowns or if you're not doing this or that. So that, I think that's why it's been great, you know, to see somebody like Vaughn Miller be able to mm-hmm. put himself on a platform. Yeah. Regardless of him saying anything or not, that he's been able to formulate that into something profitable for himself and seemingly positive. Do you think that's the answer? You think uh, the players should just boycott? I don't think it's the answer. Yeah, I'd like yeah, yeah. to see what happens. You know, I'd like to see how it affects people and their viewership, and it affects you know big time money. You you explained in the article, and I've been agreeing with this for the longest. I think it's two separate issues though, because regardless of what happens on the goddamn football field, it does not change what is going on in America. It does not change what is going on as far as social justice for African Americans in the country. Yeah, I, I but I think that's a part of like missing the mark, right? is yelling about methods of speaking about an issue. Yeah. You know, instead of talking about what the issue is. And I think that's where that, yeah. that that psychoanalyzing of our country comes into play. But a lot of people stop when you start talking about slavery, right? A lot of people stop when you start talking about the effects of slavery, mm-hmm. right? Whether that's through uh whether that's through communities and the way that they, they were formed uh, or not formed and relationships that are had or not had and also the allocation of, of money or support for any type of it's it stems from that I, yes. and a lot of people don't want to talk about that root issue So I thought about this the other day and I, I it could have all been so simple all America had to do was apologize and then offer some compensation the 40 acres of the mule that we were promised we never got did like it? what? Some reparation? Something? It would have been. It would have been all so simple. I don't think it would have worked, man. It worked for the Jewish. It didn't work for now because Jewish have like a value system that's intact. I think when it comes down is values, and I think like if you see Native Americans, they got reparations, right? They got they got these casinos. The casinos. How are Native Americans doing? I mean, it's not a lot the of worst. It's not, what is no, it? no, they're it's doing, just, in terms of like crime statistics, alcoholism, all these other things. What happens is when you systematically destroy a people and their culture and their values what do they have to hold themselves together we could have rebuilt that if you if you if if, that, if, if if you if you give us what you promised which was land mm-hmm. and leave us alone for a while what I, what i'm saying the Jews, is the, the Jewish people had to build theirs up of, the devastating effects of slavery 
trickle down to this day because there is a removal of the family unit, right? There is mm-hmm. a removal of family dynamics there. Hey, wh- you should value education. How can I value education if one, you don't allow me to go to college Two, you don't give any allocate any funds to our local public schools here. Why would I value well, something that you're showing me doesn't have any value? You're right. But also, by the way, too, we're, we're talking about slavery, but then we're not mass incarceration was another system. Mm-hmm. So it's been plenty of other systems that have come into place that have destroyed the black family more so than just. Sure. But I think you could even look at mass incarceration as a byproduct of the effects of slavery. It is slavery. It's modern right? day slavery. Yeah. Wait, but I'm saying as a byproduct, like the fact that these laws are even being broken and you're put in situations where the only viable way to make income to save your family is is by doing illegal activity that you then get incarcerated by. I think. But if you'd have given us a leg up. Right after slavery, some reparations or some land or something, then we would probably be in a better position than having to survive in the ghettos or the projects or whatever. Yeah, you you can make the argument. I just look at the situation, the plight of Native Americans, and I go, wow, this didn't work just giving money. And I think— Okay, so does that stop you from— Making changes? Does that stop you from no, it, reallocating? It, but I it guess makes, so. it makes, at least for me, it makes me go, what is the most effective way to make the change, right? Like, and I look at communities that come to America and succeed regardless of race, and we could look at black communities that come to America and succeed. You look at like the Somali communities that are around mm-hmm. America, the Eritrean communities in D.C., like these tight-knit communities that have these values and they have a lot of reinforcement of these values, and they're able to kind of hold each other up. And with Jews, you look at that specifically, even with the Chinese, with Indians, right? There's this backbone that they have. And when you crush that through racism, slavery, and systemic oppression, it's very difficult to just go, we'll figure it out, guys. I think a real movement has to be made in terms of recreating these values. And you see guys doing it. I mean, we talk all this about Farrakhan all you want, but what is Farrakhan preaching? Values, yeah, but, but here's the thing. Like, I think it's a lot of black people who do have those values and have always had those values. I mean, it goes back to what we just talked about, about focusing on the negative as opposed to the positive. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, I'm, You know I'm not saying that they're... No, 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 I know I get what you're saying. What, what, and, and those people, I imagine, would be very successful. Absolutely, but we would never know because we never got that sure. apology from America yep. and we never got those reparations, all that 40 acres and a mule or whatever it was. That could have probably helped us get on a, get a better footing in, yeah. in this society. I yeah. I mean, what, what, do you, what do you think? What do you think the solution is? <laughs> I don't know what the solution is, but I think that there needs to be more conversation than shouting matches. And I think that people need to allow or in- induce conversation. I think the thing is, too, is that like, and I can only speak from my own perspective when I'm around other groups of uh, uh, me being a mixed race, you know, being in two different places with two different types of families and two different upbringings. Uh, but when I'm around and other black males which is when i'm in football locker rooms right is that there's an unwillingness even amongst them to have the conversation you know there's an unwillingness to be able to get into it like i'm like it's it's like growing up and raising your hand like i still get chastised like i still get called you know smart nigga right because (laughs) i'm raising my hand and i'm asking more questions i'm keeping people longer in the meeting because i'm asking more questions or that i'm asking them to go a little bit deeper Mm -hmm. right and then when i do so there's an unwillingness to do so because i think people are still scratching and clawing for answers for themselves or scratching and clawing for something to say to be a part of the conversation and i think that is cultivated at a young age right like a lot of the things that i'm going through in terms of uh just personal therapy right and the things that i'm working through myself about things that I never received in childhood. I don't think there's a lot of things that in the black community that were cultivated like these types of conversations within childhood and they weren't reinforced. You know, dunking the ball was reinforced. Going yeah. to touch them was reinforced. Rapping, entertainment. Right? And yeah. all these things are constantly reinforced and that, so like right now, like I'm on the line of, you know, do I go back to football or, or don't I? And there's there's tons of things that I'm figuring out. Everything that I'm trying to do right now, it feels it feels fake. It, I feel like a fraud. And why do I feel like a fraud? I feel like a fraud because it was never reinforced from a young age. <laughs> People never showed up yeah, for yeah, anything yeah. else. Why like, do you feel, what, what makes no, you no, feel no, like a fraud? Like what? Because it wasn't yeah, yeah. reinforced when I was a, when I was a kid. Okay. Right. So the thing was, it was people only showed either. up. My yeah, extended yeah. family only showed up for my games. Sure. Right. But if I had something, you know, with the choir or whatever, nobody's showing up. My mom wouldn't even come to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. So the thing is, it's like all these other things about myself and the conversations Jeez. that I want to have, right, or the interests that I may have, have been squashed. Simply because I don't feel supported so, or that it doesn't feel this that is, it's... This is brilliant. The, w- there's a buddy of mine who's Indian and his parents want him to be a doctor, as many Indian parents do, right? Mm-hmm. He might have played tennis in college and they could give a fuck 
Because they want him to be a doctor. Yeah, it's like, tell us when the, the, the MCATs or whatever the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the doctor exam is. And, and that's exactly it. Whatever the community or our parents reinforce, we will do. At the end of the day, we're kind of like animals. If positive reinforcement, repeat. Positive reinforcement, repeat. So I'm sure tons of people, not only in the black community, but in plenty of communities, mm -hmm. are dealing with this difficult situation of like, am I failing? Even though this feels right to me, but... The, the people around me aren't telling me I'm doing the right thing. That's why they always say don't tell people your dreams. Because they're your dreams for a reason. Everybody's not going to ah, believe in your dreams. You know what yeah. I'm saying? If I have something that I want to do and I want to accomplish, that's yours. You share with everybody else, people will put doubt on it. I, I don't think you should be doing that. Yes, oh, yes, why don't yes, you go yes. back to football? Oh, why don't you go to school? Like, fuck you. This is what I want to do in this moment. Yeah. This is what my spirit is telling me to yeah, do. Yeah, you're putting yourself in their value system. Yes. Yeah, and I think that's, and I guess that's what I was saying in terms of conversation and having that reinforced, you know, it's it's having conversation about tough things that your parents or the people that you come from may not know or understand and being able to surpass that and extend that conversation. And I just think through over time through different communities or through the black community that that wasn't reinforced or that conversation wasn't, wasn't had, right? That it's, I just don't think that there was enough yeah, conversation that there's. So how do we dialogue. start reinforcing that? By well, he said you, you said two things that let me know you're a smart nigga, right? You said you said you, Andrew asked you a question and you said I don't know, which a lot of people aren't just willing to admit. Yeah. Like it's okay to say you don't know. Yeah. We're yeah. all trying to figure it out. Yeah. And you said you ask questions. Yeah. Motherfuckers is so busy giving statements yeah. and not asking enough questions. Well, that's a yeah. part of, but that's also a part of, you know, my nervousness of showing up here, right? Is that most of my interactions with the microphone in my face is Jared Odrick's official statement. As opposed to yeah. oh, sitting here having a conversation. Oh, shit. Word, yeah. right? I can't come word, over. Word. Like, there's nowhere else. Word. Like, where else am I going to go that I can yeah. just talk and try to work these things out? Where can I talk to two people and be like, okay, let's work towards a solution? Yeah. As opposed to, well, what do you have to say? Yeah. Right? Yeah, and yeah. then having the floor, and then it's, well, uh, we played a hundred and. 10% and uh, <laughs> media the, because you yeah, go back yeah. into the meet, you yeah. go back into a team meeting right the next day after a, and they'll put your quote up on the board and shame you for saying something wrong right right or stepping out of line or this isn't the the dolphin that's way that's social media that's what we were talking about Twitter earlier that's social media Char Charlotte has a great uh, uh, talking point about uh, the live shows that we do it's yeah. a safe place for unsafe people yes but, but really what it is is it's this safe place to Get this shit off of your chest. Why Not can't we have a conversation? Without being judged. Without being judged. Say the fucking thing and we'll work through it afterwards. But I don't think a lot of people within their own head or in their own lives think that they're afforded the space to do so. Because right? they're not. You get chastised for every single thing you say. You get chastised you say. for everything that you say, but yeah. then also that you have to stay on top of your life. You know what we're doing wrong? We're having these conversations in public. Like, back in the day, there was no space to have these conversations in public. So once you finally sat around with your people and yeah. talked about it, you formulated your thoughts, you know exactly what you want to say, then you make your statement. Yeah. I think you got to get back to that. Yo, there is something to that. Like, we don't have to have these conversations with the bikes on yeah, all the time. The Last but, Supper, they did it in private. You know what yeah. I mean? It wasn't, it wasn't yeah. everybody invited yeah. to the Last yeah. Supper. Yeah. It was just the yeah. crew. And then they made the painting afterwards yeah. and yeah. let people yeah. know what's happening. No, it's very true. I mean, but I guess, yeah, I guess the owners aren't really, really talking you know, no so, so. we'll never know listen i love that colin suing them but we'll never know if they colluded against yeah. colin there's no way but to prove there's it. no way to prove it they yeah. got on a private got jet a group went way up in the sky <laughs> and fucking talked about but that's this also shit. what i talk about in the article right where it's like where we feel more of this need to speak and speak out and how i feel like i've taken the, my largest role in social media has been a voyeur Right. Me kind of watching what's going on. Yeah. Right. I see other athletes who are opinionated or other people that are opinionated. And it's like, well, I'd love to speak on the matter, but I just feel like that's oversaturation and it's, right. it's diluting what I have to say. So when I do interact, I want to be able to make an impact instead of just like, oh, this is just another thing that Jared's saying or doing. Or so I think, you know, that's one thing I've, I've, I've tried to piece myself and disperse myself in, in 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 increments, maybe not small increments and maybe not overly large, but but impactful. And I think that a lot of people, since now we all feel like we all have a platform that we must say something every day, that we must post a picture yes, every day. Yes. And so, like, what is it? What, what does it say? Like, I'm not even on. Like, I have a Facebook, but I don't go on there anymore. I deleted all that right? shit off my phone. So yeah. that's the thing is that like I don't even go back there half the reason because I did nothing but like drink my way through college, and that's all the people that I have on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> the thing is, is that. Like, I think it, it has there, and even in, in on your Twitter app, it has a dot, dot, dot. 
that is ready for you to like, hey, come on. Give yeah, me something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, no, 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 no. The world deserves it. Yeah, 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 right? Yeah. You deserve it. Yeah. Go ahead, say something. Yeah. And that right there alone makes you feel like you have to say something, that it has to be heard. Yeah. Even if it's the dumbest thing, like, look at my toenail this morning. It's crazy, right? The, yeah. the, there's nothing to it. Yeah. But you feel that you have to do it. And me right now, I felt like I've been removing myself from a lot of that interaction simply because I don't think it, it allows enough silence around me to figure out who and what I am. This is a really big time in my life and transformative because I'm like, oh shit, like I'm just now being uninstitutionalized or deinstitutional, whatever the word mm. is, right? This is the first time since I was five that I haven't been a part of a large institution, mm. right? Something that was bigger than me. And so the thing is, it's, I think that we need to, need to afford ourselves a space to do so. And that, that dot, dot, dot uh, of interacting with everybody because they see everybody else doing it, that we need to, more often take a step back. Yes. We need to induce programs that talk about like, like social media, limiting social media and, and interaction, what we get from it. I have been, uh, I have a theory that I don't even think you're supposed to interact with that many people. Like, I feel like when you live, like, like, okay, you went to high school, you went to college. The people you meet in college are the people you're supposed to meet. Or the people you meet on your physical travels are the people you're supposed to meet. Or if somebody introduces you to a person, you're not supposed to be bombarded with all of this strange energy every day. All of these motherfuckers' thoughts and their opinions and their views. Yeah. You're not supposed to interact with those many, that many people all the time. I don't believe that. Yeah, yeah. I believe it throws you off. Now there's a limit to your Rolodex inside your head. And I think I, and I'm sure you guys can say the same thing. It's like when you, you know, when I'm playing high school football, like your, your band of brothers are there and, you know, they talk about high school football and then you move on from that and you go play college football. And there's a lot of people that haven't had that opportunity to move on and go do right. And then from there you go to play in the NFL and at each stage, when you go back, this is my first time going back this weekend. I'll be going back to Penn state for the first time in six years. Like there's all these people that are talking about, you remember this, you remember that? And it's like, they have to remember it for you because you're continuing down that same line in which you came from, but you're creating these new memories. Yes. And Wait. it's, it, it's, oh. it's like, you can't, you, you can, went, you went to Penn state. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Should they remember? No, that was yeah. That was you know that was a that was a good way to Some sneak of that, that in shit there. Is unforgettable. No, no, but, but no, what, you're, you're actually pro you're actually proving his point though. <laughs> yeah, because Penn State has a long storied history. Yeah, but they're remembered for being Penetration State University now yeah. because of the Sandusky paternal shit. Yeah, yeah, but there's way more history than that. Yeah, of course. I mean, you yeah, you can say they the had same. a Heisman Trophy winner last you can year. Say the same thing about America, right? There's a lot of history in America, but we're not going to forget about slavery. Yeah, I mean, most of the history had to do with like people getting killed and up and up. Maybe, maybe most of those Heisman's had to do about some diddling. <laughs> just saying, we don't know. Because if you go back in All America, my point is, keep America, you got the same with, energy, yo. Nah, but you with America, I mean? you got to deal with the Native Americans. You got to deal with slavery. Like America has a history of oppression. So there's not a history of oppression over there. Where at Penn State? No, no. <laughs> Charlemagne's on record. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if you would call that oppression. That could be an isolated incident. You seem, you seem uh, defensive, maybe a little bit over this by saying nothing. Yeah. <laughs> See, time out. This is what they do. Yeah. This is what they do. No, you're telling okay. him no, how you, know you feel. I probably projected my <laughs> feeling on you. I projected my feeling. You diverted of what, the whole conversation. It didn't make no sense. What you yeah, did yeah. is now is exactly what <laughs> you took they do to us direction. on social media. Yeah, yeah. You told now him how he question, felt. He said yeah, yeah. nothing. Now my question is: I, I, yes. Is that is there something that we need to uncover? With you, yeah, that that's a good. You question. wanted to go in this direction, yeah, because I felt very confident about me saying I'm from Penn State and I'm going back to Penn State, yeah. But you seem a little troubled. By well, that. I, I wanted to get it off of my chest. When a six foot five, three hundred pound guy tells you that you seem troubled, I think you need to be a little cautious. All right. <laughs> No, I'm just, no, 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 no. You diverted I, it this way, so obviously you need We need to get through something. Yeah, I just that need you wanna... to get it out of my system. Okay. Yeah, I just I was gonna think about it the whole time. Tell me so more, man. Instead of thinking about it's it, Penn I just State. You to can't hear Penn State without thinking without about thinking that. About so you it, say man. it, you get over it, and I'm sure Paige knows it. You know it. Yeah. As soon as you mention Penn State, you know what everybody's thinking. Of course. You yeah. know it off top. But why? Yeah. But it's, it's it's one thing is you met a person that went to Penn State, Penn State, and they were communications major. Another part of the time is went to Penn State, and probably you were coached by Sandusky. No. No, 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 no. See, I think this is the thing that people end up having in their head is that he was there and he was. Fucking he all was, the football he was left. He's not trying, you guys. He exactly. left. No, but what you have to understand is that he was not a part of the program since like 2001, which was, I was in middle school. 
So I wasn't even thinking about playing collegiate football right, right, right. when he left the program. When I got there, it was, you know, bright and sunny, happy valley. And there was nothing else going on other than football, Joe Paterno, and, you know, toga parties, right? right. So the thing is, is that, so when I got there, like, there was no, nothing that came about. Like, I remember being at Penn State in 2007 or eight when there was like a local news story talking about accusations, right? Just local accusations of Jerry Sandusky. And I remember seeing that, but it was like, who is this guy? Like, Oh, oh you didn't know who he was. No, like I didn't like, Oh wow. Most of his coaching came from the nineties. Right. right. And in the nineties, like I was, you know, I was a kid. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But the thing was, is that like when I got there, when I got there, there was no Jerry Sandusky being around. What was funny is that this is the, the weird part is that, if you got awareness training, awareness training was like punishment training. So like if you missed a class or if you, uh, you know, missed a training session or you missed a tutor session, you got awareness training, which was like training at like 6 a.m. And you had to be checked in, fully dressed, weighed in, all of those things by 5.30 a.m. And those in the off season, it was on Saturdays. And if you came in at 5.30, you would see this character in the back that was like either lifting weights or kind of in and around like... And it was it was like, who is that guy? Who's that old guy back there? It was like one of those like mystical characters that really never lifted his head and you mm-hmm. never made eye contact with him. And I found it was Jerry Sandusky. Holy shit. Yeah. And so Stand you don't know who or he, what, what, what he was looking for Scragglers? Well, I don't know. <laughs> what was he doing? But that was the thing. I think he was you know, I think he was like working out or whatever. But like he didn't really make eye contact with anybody. Nobody really spoke to him. Yeah. And so then when I found out, I'm like, oh, that's that like legendary defensive defensive coach. And they're like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, why does he like walk around here with his head down? I thought it was weird, mm. right? So the thing was, it was like I never understood like if he's such a celebrated individual that was so good for the program at one time, why is he still here? One, two, why is he not making eye contact with anybody? Oh, yeah. You can't be a coach and like well, anytime that you're recruited around, like coaches are engaging, hey, shaking yeah, their yeah, hand, they're feeling yeah, you yeah, up. They're like, yeah, hey, yeah, you know yeah, what's yeah. going on? You know how your class? How's it? You know, and so. When he walked like with his head down, I was just like, oh, that was weird. But I didn't think anything of it until I was in Miami, already drafted and gone from Penn State in 2011. And I was and these allegations blew up. And so it was just like, oh, so why was he walking with his head down? Because I would think even as a pedophile or whatever, he'd still be fucking trying to get some butt. But if you if you look at the timeline, he's not a nice guy. But that's the thing. If you look at the timeline, I guess where he was relieved of his duties was back in 2001. So I was there from 2006 to 2009. Got you. So the thing is, is that if that was the whole controversy is that people on campus knew something, right? Whether it was true or not, you know, I don't think anybody really wanted to investigate, especially with the program, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I think that's where the big controversy lied is that there were people within the university that knew something, but didn't do as much as they should have. Right, gotcha. In terms of trying to figure out what was going on. And then what is your take on that? Like how much responsibility do we put on people who who maybe knew allegations and then. Well, I, I think that's what people, not me, but people end up defending Joe for the most. Right. Yeah. Was the simple fact that he did tell a superior. Right. But. The thing is, is that nobody knows who his superior is. Everybody knows who Joe is. So he's the face of this. He's he the face of the enough. program. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, the yeah, face yeah. of everything, right? And so now that's where the argument or the, you know, the trying to figure out who or what should have had the power to do this or that. And I think when when you put yourself in the shoes of of somebody like Joe where not that you're the head of a program, but that you're a friend of somebody for 30 years and you're close with them and you work daily with them. And then this person has the number one uh, charitable organization in the state of Pennsylvania that helps orphans and has raised millions and millions of dollars for these orphans. Yeah. That the last thing you want to do is like believe that that is true. Yeah. How much so you want to be able to dish that off for somebody yeah, else to deal yeah, with? Yeah, Cause yeah. I don't want to be here leading the, the pitchforks, Against this guy that I've known for 30 years. I There's think no Joe way. was paying the orphans and giving Sandusky first dibs on the orphans. Oh, wow. That's what I think. That's I think he knew. I, like, flaming I, I, hot take. No, right I really there. think he knew. That's why he died. I think he knew. I think he I think he knew. He was ready to die as soon as football. They took his football, football away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. If football was gone, he was going to die. And but I think what, everybody kind of felt maybe that. Maybe it's ego. Like, maybe, 
you don't want to believe that you could be that close to somebody who's doing things that that's that that are that of course horrific. that you didn't see it. It's like we always see people say when you know when there's um a neighbor does a mass shooting or something. All the neighbors say the same thing. Oh, he was a nice guy. No, he sometimes all- the na- and this is what I hate when the neighbors be like, he was a little strange. Yeah, I noticed him doing this. Well, if you noticed him, why didn't you even say something? Sure. My understanding is a lot of times people go, he was pretty nice. And I think that's a reflection of them going, well, it's not my fault. Like the the, the, uh, the Vegas shooter's girlfriend goes, he used to lay in the bed and scream and yell and say to her voices, really? And you Wait, didn't say shit? Call <laughs> like, like call what the your, fuck? What is she, Filipina? You know you got a friend that's a nurse? Call her <laughs> and guy. get her to come in, get involved, and get this guy checked out. You ever thought about doing sports commentating? I don't want to have to talk about the next Tim Tebow. Nah, like, I think, where, you know what I mean? Like no, where I'm forced to talk about. I don't think that's some thing. guy that like. I don't think they. Ha- I don't think they build those no more. Like it's the. I look at the Michael Smith, the Jamel Hills, the Omani Jones. Even what they do on first take, like they're talking about more than just sports now. And I think they should. Yeah, I mean, I guess I've always been interested in becoming something else, and I feel like that's just putting me back into the spot of being more Jared Odrick, right? And the the Jared Odrick that people know, and and that's something with me that I have to figure out and understand, and that's what I'm trying to come to understand. I just I wasn't so willing to jump back into, uh, you know, talking about people that have gone through a a system, especially a system that I believe has many flaws. You don't um you just don't want to be associated with sports or football anymore. No, I can be, okay. and that's okay. But it's just. I guess what I'm saying is I have I have issues going back to Penn State because it's like these guys should be getting paid. That's my biggest thing. It's like they should be getting paid. Look, there's 110,000 people in the stadium. Saquon Barkley should be making 10 million right now. I agree. Right. So that's the thing. It's like okay, well, I can't go back there and like support it or like talk on this show with this microphone and act like this injustice isn't being done. Right. Well, guys like Jalen Rose are very vocal about NCAA players getting paid. Yeah, but they're not. I don't know. Question. If they get paid, how many of them get paid? The, the wherever the money, the money's coming in. So, like, I think you need to disperse it amongst starters, right? And then amongst the programs that are bringing in the most amount of money. Because people always end up saying, it's like, oh, well, how about the volleyball team? Well, how about the lacrosse team? <laughs> yeah. If they're not bringing they in the money, then you're not getting any money. So you want pure meritocracy, which I'm on I'm on your side with. I, I think it's I think it's a great point. My my one concern is that like there's only one or how many guys per team that, that will make it professionally? Uh I'm two, not sure. Yeah, a couple, a handful. Maybe way, less than two, because a lot of programs don't even have one guy that makes a team professionally, yeah. right? So their real value in the free market is zero. Yeah. So if their real value in the free market, ninety nine percent of the players is zero, why do they deserve to get paid? I think it's because it's like semi-pro football to me. Well, but they're they're still providing uh, pieces to a single hole that produces a lot of money. So are they Chipotle not a part of the makes team? Makes billions of dollars. Yeah, they pay the people who put together your bowl minimum wage. Okay, because their value on the Chipotle free market is minimum wage. So I think my point is, if you really want a free market. If you really want the market to decide, Saquon, Saquon Barkley, he's going to get some money. Yeah. He's going to get some money, man. A few of these guys, Leonard Fournette, when he was with L.A., hey, man, give him the bag. Give him the whole thing. Yeah. But 99% of the rest of them in a free market won't. So I think the way you actually take care of the most people, the most players, and give the most players an opportunity is by giving them the education for free. Man, you can't do shit. My son can't eat no books. I'm just... Paige, are you going to put your lips on the mic? Or are you going to fucking Here. show everybody why you're single? If there's, fuck off. If there's, a, if there's a Chipotle employee who is the best Chipotle employee ever of all time, and there's a line wrapping around the block six times to come see him at his job, would you not promote him? No, that, that's what I said. Yeah. Like Saquon Barkley deserves to make the 10 mil. Okay, but the the people who block for Saquon Barkley that make Saquon Bar- Barkley who he is, the right, person yeah. who hands the ball off to him, who who does the, you know, the... All the other things that make Saquon Barkley who he is, like, I still think that they need to get paid. But I think the thing is, is that, okay, well, how about the people who are getting paid that have nothing to do with the product? Yeah, sure. So if we're going to make that argument, it's like, well, then the fat white guys up in the suits up in the sky boxes are getting paid buku bucks. And you, we're sitting here, well, we're not going to pay the rest of the Rick guys. Rick stealing we goddamn money. It out. Like, <laughs> just because we don't have the perfect formula doesn't mean that we shouldn't be putting a formula for How about this formula? Because I've thought a lot about this. What if you let the players make as much money off of their likeness as they would like? 
And then you I think that's at the very least. I think at the very the least minimum. you could do that. I wasn't allowed to have a job. It's retarded. That right? I wasn't allowed yeah, to yeah. have a job. Yeah, so yeah, the yeah. thing was, it was like, wait, so... Or that punter who's not allowed to have a YouTube channel, he was uh, he yeah. was playing for uh, what, University then, of Miami or I don't like understand that. why NCAA wouldn't do this because they end up getting fucked in the long run when these guys take fucking... $100 for something and then later on the fucking program is suffering because of right. it and championships are being taken yeah. away like just yeah. go ahead and pay the guys and, and so they don't have to honest, do shit like that a lot that. of these guys are getting paid right like it, I don't know how it works in college football but college basketball every marquee player is getting paid yeah, I just wish it wasn't so I just wish sports didn't take such a moral high ground and they don't actually live it yes mm. right which is the nfl which is mm. ncaa i just wish there were, like let it be blue chips man let it be guys coming in on recruiting but let it be you know <laughs> let it be uh you know jesus a, yeah jesus shuttlesworth let <laughs> it be that like because if, if that's what it is and let it be that people would still buy it let these guys get paid or let these guys be who and what they want to be by the or, way it hurts nobody it's a billion dollar fucking well, business the nfl likes it because it's free marketing right yeah. they get Three years or however many years most guys stay in the league of free marketing for their players. And now once they get into the league, it's like, oh, yeah, I can't wait to watch Leonard Fournette. I saw him kill at LSU. Same thing with basketball. The only reason the mm. NBA makes you stay in the NCAA for one year, the reason they have that agreement, is because the NBA is like, all right, fine. You promote these guys that will come into the league so we don't have to do it. Cheaper. Well, well Cheaper. that's that, that's something. I think you had her on the show before. Uh Miko Grimes. Yeah, Miko. Yes. Yeah, she ends up always talking about that. It's like, well, why are the only two sports, right, that have that rule of one year or at least I think in football it's one yeah, every it's one year removed from high school from, sports. Yeah, yeah. Basketball like that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Before you can go. It's like those are the only predominantly black uh sports. And so the thing is it's like hockey, you can go when you're 14, they'll you know, send them up to Canada juniors. Uh, yeah, yeah, go yeah. there. They go to Russia. They yeah. go all over the place. And yeah. it's the same thing with tennis. Tennis, yeah. Right? It's the same thing with all the golf. With what all is these that other... about? What do you think that is? I mean, it's the argument that I was trying to make earlier that you were, you know, so vehemently fighting against the idea that black bodies are worth what they're worth and that it changes the landscape of American sports and American economics and culture. Is it possible that in football and basketball – a teenager, let's say, who's like 15, just can't physically compete with professionals. And that's and that's usually the thing that's and brought hockey, up. They can a little bit more, and, and I'm sure that's that that's a part of it. But I guess what I'm saying, is, like, when I get treatment from uh, a multitude of physical therapists up in Toronto, I own a home in Toronto, and part of the reason I'm up there is because of the physical therapists that are you know progressive and available up there. And so when I'm up there, they're treating a lot of hockey players. And when I look at these hockey players, like, I don't know, I just see I, a lot of them look like little boys. Yeah, right. Yeah. And it's like, well, if this little boy can go play in this man's league and be successful, then why aren't we letting these other people have like LeBron James wouldn't have been a little boy in the NBA. Right, he might not have been that great, though. He might not have been that great, but yeah. still, you, you there's still it, opportunity to make yeah, the yeah. money instead of being filtered. It's like, no, we yeah. got to have him for yeah. a year, or or we got to have this person for a year. And you're, it's a filtering system and allowing people to make money through this farm league. I do you're think eighteen. I think eighteen is a good job for anything. Eighteen is a good age for anything. Right, like anything. You know what I'm saying? I feel like when you turn eighteen, you're an adult. You can go make your own decisions. You can make, go make your own money. Right, right. I think eighteen is a good age. I, my one concern just with a sport like football is that you're dealing with grown men. Do you see yourself, Jared? Do I see myself? Yes, you see. I, like, like I would not want to see an 18 year old, year old oh, come fucking, and, no, bro, Can you imagine done, yourself tackling bro. a 15 year old guy? I mean, could I see myself doing it? I mean, yeah, of course, sure. but yeah, yeah, of course, you can, yeah. but, but yeah. you can see why that could be a problem. I can see why it would be a problem. He's getting destroyed. But, but I, yeah, I get that. But when I was 14, I was six four, two seventy five. Right. So I kind of didn't grow much after that. Right. A little bit. I grew, yeah. but I was a big dude by the time I was 14. Yeah. And I think what there's, there's exceptions to the rules. It's, it's, it's not just human. What else is it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mikey. What else? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's something, man. I'm trying to figure it out. But, but yeah, I mean, the, that's the thing is I think there's exceptions to the rule. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I just think we're in, in such a society where everything's got to be equal and everything's got to be fair and everything's got to be the same for everybody. Uh, it's obviously that. not. It's yeah. not. Democracy's a lie oh and we keep trying to tell ourselves it's you know what what is and it's not so I can't stand it I wish everybody would just deal with the reality that shit is not the same for everybody yeah and guess what I have a theory that equality could possibly be a pipe dream 
And the reason I say that because it's a pipe dream. Let me it tell is. you why. Exactly. Because if I'm a racist white man, I'll never look at a black person as an equal. Right. Regardless, if I'm but, a misogynistic man, I'll never look, look at it as a woman as equal. Yeah, yeah. If I'm homophobic, I never look at it as a gay person as but equal. But could don't they all deserve equal rights, regardless of how you treat them? I think yeah, equality but, but is more about justice than it is about like how you feel. If they, if we, up, if we actually upheld that, yeah. great. Like I don't treat ugly girls the same as pretty. <laughs> I don't. I don't do that. that. I know for a fact I don't do that. But that doesn't mean ugly girls don't deserve the same. But rights. that's why guys like Colin are kneeling because it's not that this legislation isn't there. We just yeah. want the laws upheld. Yeah. That's it. Simple as that. Yeah, yeah. But is that an acceptable version of equality for all of us? What? Is that enough? Equal rights and equal equal justice? If it was upheld. Yeah. I I mean, I don't want to say yes or no on it. You know what I mean? Like, well, I don't want to speak about in it. We're not pinning you to anything. Yeah, like, I know. Is your, I'm still trying to feeling? figure it out as I'm, as I'm sitting here thinking. So, you know, it's it's the pressure of two people in swivelly chairs that turn to you. <laughs> you know, Give us the answer. I like, like that, though. Well, Give us. No, that's yeah. what, listen, that's what oh, we all should do time. more of. Because none, all it, like what you said, you can't give a definite answer yeah. on any of these things. Yeah. It's, oh, it's, yeah. it's, sometimes it's on a case-by-case -case basis. Sometimes it's, it's, it's your, your thoughts yeah. may change. You evolve. Like, I, I like that way of thinking. I like being abstract with it. Yeah, I, I, I often wonder about this, this equality... Um, like what? How, how do we get to a goal if we don't know what the goal is? Does that make sense? No, understood. Yeah. So it's like if if the goal is justice, and that's what I we think want. justice. I think justice is more realistic than equality. Justice. So justice. It's justice. Yeah, we want okay. the laws upheld. Yeah. yeah. As long as you have equality under the law, yeah, we can live in that system, even though some people we know will be disadvantaged due to. Racist, racist prejudice. Yes, I was talking yeah. to a guy today who's running for mayor of Detroit. I cannot remember his name right now, but he said in Detroit, whether you're a crook or a cop, mm. if you kill, you will be punished. Mm. That's it. Yeah. That's all we want. Mm. That's justice. No, that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. I, yeah, I just think the thing about equality is just that it's so untrue through all the other things that we are and interact with. Like, like the the fact that like, you know, Stephen Ross, the owner of the, the Dolphins, like his vote counts the same as the janitor that he employs. Like mm -hmm. that's 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 false. It's a lie. Right. It's the same thing about like, you know, this little, you know, this little man walking across the street with his, you know, good looking girlfriend that I can't walk over there, you know, beat his ass and, and try to take his woman. Right. It's like it's it's a lie. Like I'm supposed to act like we're all equal and that I can't do You're that. You're six five on five six. But that's what I'm saying. Who am I supposed to be mad at for that? But that's <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Is that what are we like what are we pretending here? And I guess that's what I'm that's what I'm saying. Is How that much like, pretending do we have to do to have a uh quote unquote civilized society? Like how, how how much submitting mm. ourselves to morality or ethics do we have to do? I don't know. That's kind of why I want to go back to school, right? That's why I want to go back and take some philosophy classes, yeah. right? And Read this I'm, book, The Righteous Mind. The Righteous Mind. Jonathan Haidt. Yeah. yeah. What you reading right there? Right there is a hero with a thousand faces. The hero with a thousand faces. Joseph Campbell. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you want to go back just for, for philosophy? Just I want to. I mean, I'd like to learn. Uh, maybe do uh, film school and some philosophy classes. Um, I, yeah, I'd like to get into it. It's, it's funny because like within this time that I've spent away from football, uh, this season so far, I've done more reading than I've ever done in the past 29 years. You're not getting hit in the head every day. Well, which is true, <laughs> which is true, but the brain like, works really well. Yeah. But I found things that I like. It's like, oh shit. Like I, I have enough space to get into things that I like and that there's not coursework or syllabus or practice or these regimented things that I have to be at or even in the off season mm. where I feel like I have to be scurrying to do all these free flowing things because I know I have to go back to this rigid uh, regimented schedule it's right the first the time you felt free months. yeah yeah and so that's what it really feels like and so like I want to be able to speak on these issues and I think there's so many people that end up speaking about these issues to make this come full circle are individuals who have the power and the voice but no education, the power and the voice, but no understanding of what came before them. And so then that's why you get these tweets that are reinforced and a mass amount of people are like, yeah, you bum. But like, what are you saying? What are you doing? What are we talking about here? What is being, what, what, what are we saying about ourselves that, you know, uh, you know, I understand who I am. I'm a lineman that will never, you know, score a touchdown. I'm a lineman that, you know, doesn't throw the ball or catch the ball. I get that. 
right? I played for the Dolphins and the Jaguars, right? I understand all these things. But what is it saying like that an article like mine, not mine, but an article like mine won't be validated or retweeted, which because is who you seem, are. seemingly the same thing now, retweets and validation, um, because of who I am and that I'm not speaking as much truth or that what I'm saying isn't as valuable to a group of people or to us as Americans mm -hmm. simply because I'm not LeBron, simply because I'm not Michael Jordan mm -hmm. and doing these things. And I think that's the same thing. And that's what I ask in the article is like, you know, who's your favorite person that plays sports instead of who's your favorite sports star, All right? Because it's just, you know, what, what is being said and are they, are they willing to educate? And there's a lot of times where I really believe because it's happened in my own life at the, the, you know, the measly little self that I am of being a defensive lineman is that, you know, people want to continue to associate themselves with the best or the biggest or the brightest. Right. Mm -hmm. And they won't tell you the truth or put you through the ringer or the gauntlet of questions and asking you about what you have to say because they want to continue being associated with you. It's like loved That's ones. Real. It's loved ones who, you know, want to be associated with you because you play the sport or that everybody watches or because you have money that will potentially help them out in the tough spot. Yes, men. So, yeah. So Dick they're not going to... And the thing is, is that it can happen from your mother and father all the way down to your buddy from second grade, mm -hmm. right? So the thing is, it's like... I don't think there's a lot of people saying, yo, LeBron, that was kind of dumb, right? There's not a lot of people saying, yo, Mike, like, I know you're the greatest of all time, but that was one of the worst statements of all time. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. the ceiling is the roof, right? Like, what? You remember when it, like, what? <laughs> that shit was hot. <laughs> that shit was hot. That shit was trash. Real talk, I never That shit was trash, bro. I never liked ceilings again the same way. That shit was trash. But see, but that's again. right there. But that's what I'm saying. That shit was trash. I you know, got what Mike was the saying. Irony, the, the, irony the, corrodes, the, corrodes, the irony corrodes the moment, right? It corrodes what actually is. Yeah. That when you make it into something that is comical and that everybody catches on to because it is Mike and you don't want to ruin the image that you have of Mike. Sure. I have a rule. Like, it's like, don't meet your heroes. Just like you talk about, like, don't talk about your dreams or whatever. Yeah. Don't meet your heroes. Well, don't follow him on Instagram because yeah, you be might see Michael Jordan and pay those goddamn granddad jeans. And, and you'd be that's like, this what I'm saying. You'll be disappointed. <laughs> You'll be disappointed. And it's like, yo, Kobe's the best. Let me hit this follow button. And then it's like, yo, your picture is all off. Like, I just can't even look at that you, picture. You, you know what those guys should do? They should do what I do. And that is, I like to put the light on people who I know are way smarter than me, who have more information than me, who are more experienced than me. That's what they should be doing more of. LeBron should be retweeting your article. LeBron should be saying, hey, go listen to... Michael Eric Dice in the corner. Let's go listen to somebody who knows what the fuck they're talking about on this issue. Uh, Reverend Al Sharpton is on Angela Rye's podcast this week, and I thought it was a phenomenal, phenomenal conversation. And Reverend Al talked about how all of these new organizations never come to them to figure out how to actually do shit. They just want to make noise and they just want to be seen instead of coming to an organization that's been around for 50 years, yeah. the National, National Action Network, and figuring out how to actually do things. And he spoke about, uh, I can't remember the young lady's name, but it's a young, it's like three of them that came out of the National Action Network. One was Tamika Mallory. I can't remember the other lady's name, but she knew how to organize. Mm. She had, uh, when the National Action Network marched on Washington, she's the one who did all of the permits and got everything done. So they, they were able to organize 20,000 people. So when it came to the Women's March, they used her expertise. But it was based off what she learned with people who knew what the fuck they were actually doing yeah. and not people who were just trying to make noise and get attention. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, I just don't think there's much, like, it's the same thing. It's like, when I go back to reinforcing, right? Uh, who I am and what I want to be separate from football. I just don't think there's a lot of people reinforcing these athletes or people who have succeeded in anything mm -hmm. at a high level in one direction. There's not really people pulling them in other directions to go somewhere else and say something else to have their own narrative, right? Everybody kind of wants to be a part of this this stream. They want to hop into this stream that is so powerful Tribalism, and strong man. and going in one direction. Group think, baby. It, we are tribal people, and I think that's why people gravitate towards – uh, a tweet like that uh, that LeBron says is because not only are they fans of LeBron, but they're fans of the sentiment that he's putting out there. They also want to be associated with Trump, you're a bum. So if you say something that people gravitate to or they want to confirm, right? Like when we turn on CNN, it's not because we want to learn. It's because we want to confirm what we already know. Yeah. Trump's an asshole. Yeah. Fox News, the opposite. I want to confirm that Trump is doing a good job. Boom. Yeah. So if that's 
the way that our brains work, right? It's confirmation. As long as you're saying something that your tribe agrees with, they will follow. And it, and it could be you. Yeah, but I also think it, it comes into what CNN's willing to retweet or put up or repost, right? They're willing to put up Michael Jordan's name, just like they're willing to put up Joe sure. Paterno's name over Sandusky. Because it gets more, more Well, that's eyes, what I'm right? saying, yeah. is that it's, well, not more eyes, but more money, more clicks, right? right? Well, the eyes equal, equate to money. And so I guess that's what I'm saying, is that I... You know, and then you're talking about, you know, a totally different thing. And we're getting into Marxism and stuff like that, where you're talking about, you know, the destruction of capitalism and, and capitalism corroding us as a society and it being a, a self-eating disease that we're all a part of and not trying to stop. There's, so. there's one way of looking at it like that. But the other way of looking at capitalism is it's a perfect uh, reflection of how our brain works. Like you talked about earlier, you said... Um, we get reinforced for these things and then we do the things we get reinforced for. And the idea with capitalism is essentially if I put in more work and more time working, I'll get more food resources or whatever it is. And capitalism essentially rewards, it should reward work, just like our brains will reward the work at football to get that positive reinforcement. So as long as we're reinforcing the right things, capitalism can function now in its extreme state is it bad yes is communism in its extreme state bad sure we know right yeah nothing in its extreme is good but if we can put some you know limitations on it i think it, i think it can function quite well and it's i think brought a lot of people out of poverty capitalism i agree with you yeah. and i think that's the problem now the problem is it's too extreme there's yeah. no middle ground that we all can come to look at the gap you see the gap in wealth in this country i mean that's an example of the extremity of the extremity of capitalism right when you have what is it 90 percent, chris or something like that of of the wealth in america is in the hands of maybe something like something absurd and it's a huge transition from i think even in the 50s and 70s right so clearly there's something that's going on right yeah. we've reached an extreme with it and you have to break that system and we used to do it through like uh breaking why, the fuck you, why you do the basket weave technique Son, this girl's you still in my think head, about that girl bro. i can't stop <laughs> like, jesus bro. christ she's kidding my <laughs> head bro i gotta like, call break her up the system. i gotta, I gotta break call her up system. she broke hey. my system bro. <laughs> what happened she really did. i just got the most unbelievable blowjob i've ever had in my entire life it was life-changing the this blowjob could have could have created a two-state solution between Israel and Palestine. <laughs> That's what this blowjob could do. I swear to God. I literally was getting a blowjob, and I'm like, yo, Kim Jong-un need this, bro, because we could really work something out. It was, this woman could cure. Where did you need her? I, I know, I, where did, she came to a show. She, she was at a show. With Jared on, he's in New York. She's trying to figure out. Where, she came to one of your shows. Yeah, she was at one of my shows, and honestly, I would, I, I don't mean this as disrespect to her. I would love to put her on to other people because people need to experience, experience. this yes. level of happiness. What makes you think she's not at the next show doing that right now? She might be. And yeah. I hope she is. <laughs> I hope she is. Yeah. What I'm trying to, like, if I was the only person that experienced that. What's the address of this club? Uh, the, uh, yeah, just wait outside. <laughs> Did you meet Andrew at five in the morning? <laughs> no, I'm just going to do the, the comedy I'm just going to do the motion and you? make no? eye contact. No? Huh? <laughs> Bro, I, it Jared, was unbelievable. Tell them where they can find you, man. Uh, Max Bear 75 on Instagram and then just Jared Odrick on Twitter. Max Bear, um, the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boxer. yeah, it was given to me as a nickname. I'm trying to find a new nickname, man. But uh, it was given to me as a nickname from one of my uh, my coaches in Miami. Uh, we had a new coaching staff coming in that came in with uh, Joe Philbin. And so when that happened, there was a whole new coaching staff that was coming in during the off season when you kind of had to be there for like some of the workouts, the, the, the spring workouts and whatnot. And uh, there was a linebacker coach uh, that stopped me in the hallway and said, hey. I said, oh, what's up? And he goes, I'm a new coach here, and I watched your tape. I like it. And I'm like, oh, good. He's like, I'm going to have a nickname for you. Next time I see you, I'll have a nickname. You remind me of somebody. I don't know who it is yet. So then, like, the next week I come in, and he goes, hey, catch me off guard second time in the same spot. And uh, he goes, Max Bear. And I'm like, Max Bear, huh? And he's like, you know who he is? And I'm like, yeah, I think I know the boxer, right? He's like, yep, you play like he fights. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And so then throughout the preseason, he kept calling me Max or Maxi or Max Bear or whatever it was. And so I kind of took that on for a second. So that's how that happened. Yeah, Max Bear. You got an interesting Joe story, Lewis, man. You ever thought about writing a book? Back, yeah. yeah, I've approached different people about, you know, writing articles and things like that. And they always think that, you know, you need to, you know, expand upon it and, and, and do a book. But book seems daunting to me. How'd you do it? Um, you just got to do it. It's just like one of those things that you got to do. You make time for what you want to make time for. Like I'd, I'd, I'd wake up on Saturday morning and... You know, write things out and send them to Chris. And yeah. 
Chris would flush it out. Like it's just, I mean, it's a, it's a, it is daunting. Yeah. But it's just something you got to do. How long did it take you to do it? Mm. You think so? I don't know. Uh, a year? Eh, maybe like a year. Maybe yeah. like a year. Like a year. I mean, I've got plenty of notes on my phone that I can talk about things, but I think the thing is, is that, you know, I need one of these guys with a computer sitting. Oh, absolutely. You know, that I... Uh, Huge. But that's yeah. the biggest thing. The biggest yeah. thing is getting started yeah. and then having, like, knowing what you want to talk about and then just structuring it. That's what we did. We had a board. Yeah. We put everything up on the board. I'm going to talk about this, this, and this, and keep it moving. Well, and then my issue is with, with, you know, writing a book or anything like that is that, you know, it's the timing of it. It's like... A lot of people get labeled and pinned when you have something that you disagree with that you came from, you get pinned as, you know, uh, as disgruntled. Right. And, and you don't want to be the dis disgruntled football player that left the game that just couldn't hack it. Right. So you end up talking about all these things you disagree with. So but what? I know, but I guess yeah. I don't want to be that person. Right. I want to be able to formulate my words in the right way that that make it clear. Like even with the article, the way that I first wrote it and the way that I wanted it out there with passion, with anger, with all these things. Right. Well, it probably would have came off a different way than mm -hmm. what I actually felt and what I was trying to connect with people. So I guess that's what I'm trying to figure out. And, you know, it's only been a few months since I decided, you know, to potentially stop playing football, right, to entertain that idea. So I guess that's the thing is that, you know, I, I think that, that could be on the horizon, but I need to keep running into people like you who just did their first book as well. So. Michael Ben is putting one up. Yeah. He's got one coming out uh, in December. It's called Things White People Hate or something like that. Oh, boy. Yeah, I think it's, it's like some some crazy. It's a, it's a dope title. Coming in hot. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it's December, though. Can I, uh, before we get out of here, I'd just like to ask you a question. Uh, I try to talk to people who have uh, played you know, athletics at the, the highest level. Yeah. Um, you've been around people, coaches, other teammates who have led men. What have you found makes a great leader? Empathy. Empathy and understanding what is going to connect with this person. How do I motivate this person instead of throwing something up on the board and saying, go do this because I don't want or know how to connect with you. Mm. Right. And I think there's a lot of men who call them, beat themselves on the chest, beat their chest and say, I'm a man or I'm a this or I'm that. Some of the, the greatest leaders that I've been around never had to do that. Right. They never had to beat their own chest. They never threw it up on the board and said, if you're not like this, you're not a part of this. It's it's more than that. Right. It's more than, you know, putting up your mantras on the wall in the team meeting room. Right. It's connecting with people and finding out what makes them tick. And I think that was one of the greatest things about going to Penn State was that I found a coach. I didn't go for Joe Paterno. I went for Coach Larry Johnson. Right. Who was the defensive line coach there who probably should have got the head coaching job after the dismantling of the program. But they wanted to clean house. Right. But. He's at Ohio State. First first year he leaves Penn State, he goes and wins a national championship with Ohio State. And he was the main reason that I went to Penn State. Because when he came and recruited me at my school, he walked in with his suit. He had a plan. He sat down. He was like, this is what I see you doing at Penn State. And it was more than I ever imagined. It was more than I even thought of, right? And then he connected with me, and he saw that I was angry. And I'm still angry, right? But I was a very, very angry kid. And I Why? was like, well, uh, from a multitude of things that I'm going through with my therapist right now. Got you. But, I mean, that's the thing. Is We're that, all in therapy right well, now. Well, yeah, it's yeah. No, we are, we are. No, therapy. No, 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 seriously. It's, but, it's, therapy's good, bro. Yeah, yeah, but we, the we, thing yeah. is, it's it's like finding, it's finding what makes this person tick, right? It was almost for me that it was, that, that football wasn't like a love of mine. It was just where I knew that I could be angry. And I could be An rewarded for yeah, being yeah, so yeah. angry. I respect that, though. So he found the right type of anger, right? I only figured this out after I left that it was like, oh, shit. Like, he performed some some magical shit on me. Like, he found something, and he found something within me that was able to, to make me angry. There were times where he, my sophomore year, I was a starter, and I started over guys that I thought I shouldn't be starting over. Mm -hmm. But it was, he told me, he goes, believe me, believe me, this will work. And then right after he, you know, patted my ego, told me that this will work, you're going to be this, you're going to be that, Almost every practice, he kicked me out of practice. Almost every practice, he buried me <laughs> underneath double teams, right? Because he put me in the situation where I was going to get pissed. And when I got pissed, I couldn't be stopped. And it was, it, something came out of me, and it was finding that. It was taking the time, whether through on the field or off the field or in meeting rooms, understanding what makes people tick and putting, putting them 
in a situation where they can understand where this person is coming from. And I think it may be easier for college coaches to do that, especially the ones that recruit you, because they go to your hometown. They come to your house. They see the the parent or the lack of parents there, right? They see the situation in which you come from. And I think when you find men like that that are able to see that and then formulate how they're going to interact with you and extract something great out of you, then that's cool. And I don't think you get that a lot in professional sports. And I think I bet you Larry used to talk to you a lot, too. Yeah, he would. So he yeah, knew what yeah. motivated you. He yeah. knew he knew you as a person. You weren't yeah. just a product to him. So like when I got in, I got a, I, I got a misdemeanor at, at Penn State. Right, I got into a fight. I got an underage another time, um, and Someone there was plenty. Fought you? Yeah, I guess. I guess like, it's not a fight. It was more of a Hulk know, smash. Yeah, it actually was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. and and it was and I you know kind of got away pretty clean from a lot of things that I did at Penn State and you know and just the the, the place that I was in, but. He wanted to figure out why. I always remember him asking, why? why?" Instead of you know walking to the office and saying, well, this is your punishment and you're stupid for doing this. It was why. Because he wanted to make sure you didn't do it again. Yeah, and it was yeah. why. And then when he got to the why, I think he understood how to lead me. And there's a lot of men that, especially in professional sports, that don't have time for why and that don't want to know why, that just want to get a job done. Because there's so many professional coaches that, that want to – that want uh, the job for themselves. They want to be able to ascend within the NFL ranks themselves, right? So it's not when you're a, a defensive line coach at a collegiate, you know, university or a university where you're teaching young men. I think that's the difference. Is that he felt that he was teaching and guiding and leading young men, and that if he got plenty of opportunities to go coach in the NFL. And he always said no because he never got to impact people the way that he was able to impact the young men that came through that program, mm. right? Because it's like once you have the the money changes it, right? It's the business of football changes it. It's it's not the same, and you're They're not allowed older to be as empathetic, too, right? You're yeah, a little you're more older set in your and, ways, whereas eighteen year old is still a child. And there's a lot of m- what we call men in the NFL that are still within their childlike ego which yeah. is with still within the, the with the what joseph campbell calls the infantile ego right and not ever separating from that uh doesn't allow you to fully bloom into adulthood and i think there's a lot of people that have been padded including myself and this is why it's been such a revelation for me these past couple months that you thought that you were a man because you have a house you have a car and you're able yeah. to give mom some some money but that isn't what necess- necessitates adulthood and being a man. Yeah. And I think a lot of people hide behind the ability to be rewarded and praised for being this big, strong person, but not a man. I think it's dope to uh, find outlets to channel your anger through. Like, what you said just now reminds me a lot of the whole struggle between Bruce Banner and the Incredible Hulk. Like He was struggling for years on how to control the Hulk, but once he finally realized when to be angry... And channel that energy in the, through the right outlets. He was like the most unstoppable superhero in the whole fucking Marvel universe. Yeah, and I think that's you know, and I think that's what you know. Getting back to your question, I think, uh, yeah, I, I think that's the the difference, especially between collegiate and uh, professional coaches, is is finding that empathy and being able to connect with people. So, so you empathy, think baby. college coaches are are better leaders? Yeah, I think um, more empathetic. Because who the fuck feels sorry for a multimillionaire? Yeah, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a huge point yeah, because a, you see that there's a, a rift. There's this rift between coaches and players in the NFL, especially when you got like a 20 year old coming in who just signed a 40 million dollar deal, <laughs> right? Who like still like has no idea what taxes are, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this coach who's been just worn down by taxes, worn down by his wife and eight kids, worn down by going from city to city, coaching job to coaching job, yeah. right? That this guy that comes in is given forty million dollars and he's been taxing away at it, and it's there's no security for him because he's got no guaranteed money in his contract, right? You see that there's this this like ah oh, well this fucking kid you know there's this resentment. fucking yeah hell yeah there's resentment because most of those professional coaches are failed athletes. That's right. Yeah. Yo, you know what I'm thinking about right now? Who was the team? Yeah. That boycotted was a college team that boycotted. They didn't play because something North happened. Northwestern or something? Was it Northwestern? Yeah. It seemed like they made more of an impact than guys like. Colin, because uh, yes, yes, everybody yes, yes, said yes. with Colin, you're rich. Why do you care? Yeah. Like, why are you taking a yeah. fucking knee? Why do you care about what's going on? You got money. That's a lack of empathy. I was thinking about this with Colin recently. I'm, I'm actually concerned that if he does get on a team and ends up playing and doesn't play well, 
that people will be able to sweep this under the rug. I think it's actually better for the movement if he doesn't end on a team because then he can keep it going. I think he should walk away. Walk away from? Football. I think he should retire. I think he should say, due to the racial injustice that I have experienced in this league, being that I'm blackballed because I'm standing up yep. for the, the African Americans that are being killed, I don't want to be a part of this yeah. racist ass establishment. I would yeah. I would like lay it all out and walk away. Yeah, I think, yeah. Whatever I mean, can keep it going. Don't give them the opportunity to shut you up. And I think if he ends up playing, which will most likely be for a team that isn't that good and doesn't play well, they'll use it against him. Well, and that's, you know, and that's a part of my thinking as well is that I want to be able to, everybody wants to walk away on their terms, yeah. right? Because if you allow somebody else to control your narrative, then the thing that you stood for or what you're trying to say kind of gets diluted, right? And I just, yeah, I agree. But I think that's kind of what, you know, I wouldn't doubt that that's in the thinking of him, you know, claiming collusion, mm. right? That could be the beginning of that narrative, mm. right? Where True it's indeed. like, it's it's collusion, and these are the reasons that I'm doing that. You know, there's things going on with me right now that I'd love to talk about, right, in terms of my situation with the NFL and with, you know, the Jaguars and all these other things that, you know, I'm trying to separate myself from. But uh, when you have cases that need to be handled, you can't fully say all these things until it's over and done with, right? Gotcha. And so it's kind of like there's tons of things that I would love to say to support that statement. There's tons of things that I'm sure other people would love to to say and do as well, but I'm not sure if they're in the same situation as me. But I think uh, I think that's potentially a direction that he is or could be going with that collusion. I'm going to connect you with Colin, man. It's been a great conversation, man. Jared, thank you for coming today. Thanks for having me. Thank and, you, uh, man. I'm, yeah, I'm, I appreciate I'm, it. We need to start working on that book. Andrew, anything else you want to add? Um, no, I just thought it was a great combo. Thanks so much for, for coming through, man. Yeah, yeah thanks for letting yeah, me stop man, by. Yeah, man, you got a lot of ideas. I think if you just get them down, uh, you know, we, we hook up with a Moro. I don't see why. I don't see why you were. Oh, it's, is that you? Yeah, it's my, it's my stenographer. You're writing a book? My stenographer over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. You said I need a guy with a What's laptop. Yeah, I, mean, I know. I just, it was for dramatic effect. Oh, my the, bad. There's, I didn't there's, know there's a camera on really? me. There we go. Wow. <laughs> All right, cool. Good for you, man. Golden. Yeah. That's great. And the, and the article is on sportingnews.com. Sporting News. It's on Sporting News. Uh, sportingnews.com. What's the title uh, so they could just Google the who title? Do you, who do you cheer for? Who do you cheer for? Sportingnews.com. Go check out the, read the article. Leave great article. comments in the SoundCloud. And then uh, is there an Instagram or anything they can find you at? Yeah, Max Bear. Max Seven Bear. Five. Seven five. Five, boom, yeah. Hit them up. B A E R. That's right. All right. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening.